Bugs and welcome to another episode of Trey Bong. Hello, Bugs and welcome to another episode of Trey Bong. Hello, Bugs and welcome to another episode of Trey Bong. <laughs> oh, good God. I'm Jake Spear and... Oh, yeah, all right, fine. It was a bit... It was a bit and now here they come, ladies and gentlemen, out of the front end. It's coming up here, it's James Bond. It's James Bond coming up on the right hand side. <laughs> All right, the here they are. so nice, they introduced it thrice. 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 Oh, yeah. And who's responsible for that? Well, the fella sitting next to me is Double O Derby Deck. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. And you told me you don't like those, do you? And I'm not uh, responsible for saying it thrice. No. I said it the second time. You yeah, did. Brandon's responsible for thrice. Yes. For thrice. And Our... I don't like it when you make the little vocal noises. <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> well, spoiler alert, you already know he's here, but I'll introduce him anyway. It's our MI6 expert in the field, Mr. Brandon McClellan. And here comes round, uh, r- round the outside. It's reporting for duty, reporting for duty, and it's up by a nose. <laughs> the sound with the golden pun. Yes, I apologise. His Royal the, Majesty. Yes, your Royal Majesty. Expert in the field. Expert in the field. Thank you. Uh, the and... sound with the golden pun. <laughs> How you doing, fellas? Yeah, yeah. fine. Good. Oh, great. <laughs> Couldn't tell. Yeah, I'm very low energy today. <laughs> Are you? Well, let's see if we can ramp you up. We've got a hell of a show. What is it? What's our show? There's so many things to get through. But first, before we do that, I must say, folks, thanks for listening. What? We hope your week has been Trey Bond. Trey Bond? Trey <laughs> Brandon, you've got the list. What's first on our agenda? Tell, tell, what's to the tell episode? you what the episode is. Uh, yeah. I already <laughs> gave you the prompts. <laughs> Brandon, oh, let, let everyone know, including me, yes. what the hell's going on and what our mission is today. Well, today, uh, ladies, gentlemen, and in anyone who is listening... Two minutes in. Uh, yeah, they might uh, not be here no, still. No, no, they're <laughs> it gone. really shouldn't they're be two gone. minutes. We should have got through this in at least about 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, we're doing the probably our most controversial episode <gasps> so far. <gasps> Um, we're going Why? to be ranking all six oh, yeah. of the gentlemen who have donned the dinner jacket. Oh, uh, we're ranking the Bond actors. My goodness, it's dinner jacket here. models. Yes, our dinner jacket models, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the criteria we'll be judging them on. <laughs> yeah, controversial, big episode. Big we're, episode. We're here. I'm woefully underprepared, uh, but you know, uh, I've, should make I've it organized a list. Oh, that's fine. That's you've at least prepared. watched all the films, so I think you're pretty well yes. prepared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before we dive into any, any serious business like preconceived notions or anything like that. Yeah. Well, lot, lots. Let's go down and, 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 and check the postal room. What do you oh. mean? Yeah, so I'll uh, head on down to the mail room now. And I'm uh, going through the bag. Oh, got a couple of uh, we got a couple of fan mails. Wow, so, actual fan mails. What are we waiting for? Oh, I was thinking the theme would play. Oh, it normally does here. It normally it normally does. does. We must do it in person. Oh, oh there I it is. do there declare it. it's fan mail. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is fan mail. Uh, so we've got an email here from Alexander Flamenco. Oh, <laughs> straight from the Bond world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that a uh, Fleming character that or is what? so true. Oh, wow. Is this our new arch nemesis? <laughs> well, could be. Uh-oh. Non-Bond wrong is, <laughs> the, is the subject of this particular <laughs> fan mail. Like an article. He starts, Hi, Trey Bond. Hi. I am ashamed to admit that I got non-Bond very wrong. What do you mean? I would like you to know that I feel like an absolute degenerate for Uh, making that mistake when I submitted my suggestion on your Instagram poll. (laughs) Your broad chastisement of listeners who made similar mistakes as me certainly cut to the core. But I will not (laughs) apologise for my suggestion. And, in the voice of your best Sean Connery impression, I stand by it. I will explain. I suggested that you review Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. Okay. I fully acknowledge that its links with the Bond franchise are tangential at best, at least on the surface. Oh, Daniel Craig. And the obvious detail that both Daniel Craig and Anna de Armas are the film's protagonists Mm, is not enough to warrant time on your podcast. However... Knives Out was one of the the, the less guilty... I uh, would say so too, yeah. 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 Mm, But... mm. 
Let him speak for himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, I nevertheless think that you can sustain a meaningful discussion about this film in relation to the Bond world. So he's, pl- yeah. he's pleading his case. This is, we'll see him sure, in court. Sure, sure, and here sure, sure. He's, he's got a lot of faith in us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dirty devil. Look, I think... Look. 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 look, look, look. <laughs> I think you can use that film to explore Bond fatigue among the other actors who portrayed Bond over the years. Mm. After watching Knives Out, which in and of itself is an incredible film, I wondered to what extent Craig potentially used that role to challenge the perception that he is limited to Bond and only Bond. And a little bit of maybe like therapy. Perhaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, after all, Craig allegedly stated that he would rather, quote, slash his wrists than play James Bond again. Yeah, Ooh, quote. therapy. Mm-hmm. You know. Which <laughs> does not come as a surprise since Spectre was such a big bowl of demon shit and everybody knows it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> let him talk, let him talk. <laughs> so perhaps his role demon as the shit, ingenious man. Benoit Blanc, not Bond, but Blanc, was an opportunity for him to showcase his qualities as a hero, but of a different mould and with more Mm. nuance. Mm. In fact, there is probably enough in his portrayal of Blanc that could suggest he undermines and parodies the very idea of a cool, suave and charismatic hero for which he is so well known Mm. since adopting the Bond role. Exploring all sides. Mm. Mm. Perhaps this suggestion is a bit too meta and a bit too thin, but I nevertheless think you all would do a great job mining his performance along those lines. That's how I get described. (laughs) Bit, bit too meta and a bit too thin. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you could likewise open up to other Bond actors who expressed similar fatigue. Mm. Keep up the incredible work, and I love how the ties that bind death via Otto's fixation, uh-huh. colon, feed the Bondola, has become <laughs> an absolute nightmare. <laughs> If I may say, I definitely think you should continue exploring Bond's diet. You've pretty much covered the three big meals of the day. But why not really dive deep into this whole food thing? Maybe Bond at an Italian wedding. Bond Bond... ate another Mentos. (laughs) Maybe Bond samples a churrascaria. I hope I said that right. Tapas that leads into a full-blown dinner. (laughs) I I would like more advice on where to go with this thing. (laughs) This nightmare. So yeah, I like that. I'll even settle for snacks and such. So maybe a Mentos. If that's a snack, I don't know what a snack qualifies snack as a snack. portion. Yes, <laughs> everything is a meal to me. Is um, there any meals in today's story, Jack? You'll have to find out. All right, all right. Tune in next time. <laughs> Keep it going. Much love from Montreal, Alexander Flamenco. Oh, oh thanks, fabulous. Mr. Flamenco. A, a dedicated uh, connoisseur of, of all things Bond. Absolutely. And Trey Bond. And Trey Bond, <laughs> very true. <laughs> Uh, we have one here from uh, Joseph Thomas, and I sent you boys a music video uh, yes, via the, the group chat, which um, mm. he, he sent through to us uh, himself. Oh, wow, right. thank you. Um, he says, hey guys, hey guys, hey guys, <laughs> I had the opportunity to edit this video for this band called Creature Creature, oh, who wow. wrote and he performed... He edited it. He edited it. Oh, wow. Yeah, who wrote and performed their own version of the No Time to Die theme. And I have been asked by them to share it around as much as possible. I think you guys would enjoy it. They really did a wonderful job on the song, and I had a blast creating this video. If you guys would be willing to share among some fellow Bond fans, that would be very kind. Oh, mate. Um, he uh, Loves gives us the, the link there. Yeah, the Love edit was great. great. That it was, was great. one of the things that was the was very was first said, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 How really, good was all, the edit? All beautifully matched, and yeah, real. He's, yeah, he really defines Bond in that edit. I yeah. thought it was a good it was a good primer. Brandon said this is well timed when he sent it through to us because mm. we needed to do our research <laughs> for today's episode, or just to refresh the memories. Yeah, so see it if came this at triggered a anything, time, yeah. didn't it? Well, mm. good work. And, and you had an interesting thing where you said that it didn't... Uh, it kind of solidified where you... If anything, it reinforced the fact that I've made the right choice with mm. my list. Uh, God, right. I'm curious about that. Well, I, what I'll do is I'll post this on the Twitter and Facebook pages for Trayvon, which yeah, you can cool. find at Trayvon Pod. Give it a watch. Uh, and give it a watch. Well worth it. Um, 
I was actually quite a fan of the song as well, but I, I didn't like the song. I, you know, it's very much what I was listening to in high school, and yeah. I, don't, I don't think yeah. my music tastes have changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, he then continues. Also, I just finished listening to all the original twenty-four episodes about each film, and oh, I wow. love every single episode. Com- uh, achievement unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, achievement. Yeah. Even the ones I didn't necessarily agree with. Oh. However, once I appre- more than one. <laughs> yeah, more than one. <laughs> I I get it. <laughs> <laughs> However, I appreciated uh, the respect you showed towards Spectre. Anyway, keep... Res- you got a respecter. That's right. Oh. Anyway, keep up the awesome, hilarious work, Joseph Thomas. And you can find him on Twitter at Joseph Thomas 4, the numeral 4 there. The number. And I think Alexander Flamenco and Joseph Thomas might come to loggerheads about Spectre. Ooh. Which they seems... can have it out in the comments section on yeah. the Trade Instagram They can meet page. me firmly in the middle where I'll be. <laughs> 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 and now, ladies and gentlemen, we have a um, we have an audio submission. A what? A what? A question what has come through. <laughs> yeah, an uh, audio question from our good friend. Well, you know what? Let me just play it for it you. Is. Hello, Trey Bond. Ray from the Bond Armory here, and I have a question for my favorite trio of dirty devils. Halloween is only a few days away, and as per our family's tradition, we're doing a family theme for the costumes. And this year, we're doing one of my top five favorite film franchises, Mad Max, specifically Fury Road. And it got me thinking, is Max Rakitansky to Australia what James Bond is to Britain? Hmm. Well, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You gents never fail to make me laugh. Keep up the excellent work. Stay safe, stay healthy, and witness me! Fantastic! Good so on that's, you, Ray. that's Ray from At the Bond Armory. Wow, uh, good question. I, Hell of a question. My initial response is that I feel like the Bond, if Bond represents Britain, mm-hmm. unfortunately, I think Crocodile Dundee <laughs> represents That would be Australia. our James Bond. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, good good thought. Not enough, maybe, films. We're not an aspirational people. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. Croc Dundee is as close as we get to Bond. Mad Max is very important. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. But I feel like it's more now. important to to people overseas. I feel like people in North America. I think I think for me, Mad Max represents a real milestone in Australian filmmaking, mm. and I think that's why a lot of people find it important. Maybe in our circles, people that we know, yes. you know, there's a real reverence to it because it was kind of the first to. To boldly exclaim to the world, this is what we do, this is the movies we make. Mm. So it's very important in our cinematic history, mm. but not not in a James Bond sense. No, no, no. and I, w- I would argue that it's that the generational gap is starting to show now when it comes to Mad Max. Yeah. I think people in their 30s and 40s would be more attached to Mad Max than, than most other kind of demographics. You don't think Fury Road kind of rekindled... I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't particularly I enjoy know. Fury Road. Like we it. went to the but premiere. I don't know skin. whether... If you talk to young people today, all of these whippersnappers... <laughs> yes, I, yes. I, Ankle biters. I, I <laughs> doubt many of them would even know who Max, Max is. is. But that's his whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, his whole thing is yeah, go and watch yeah. the movie. And I don't think many people do. You, yeah, I don't I, know. I, I feel like... Crocodile Dundee is, is that's that's is our the bond. That's the yeah, that's the answer. <laughs> and I would say that's what the rest of the world looks sees at us. as our yeah. bond. But mm. I I wonder if we see more of ourselves in Kath and Kim than we do <sighs> Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> yeah, and Maybe. I don't think we see too much of ourselves in Mr. Max. No, he does represent, but he's not really an aspect. He's he's not really. In from around Australia, here. like He's in a sense, really, it's, and the story's not really of Australia either. Well, the it's, first two are. Yeah, they're set here, but it's it is from this Thunder, kind of from Thunderdome. They it become gets crazy. A little Everyone more, is American, but in the first two, they're all they're Aussies. More Aussies. Yeah, 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 they yeah. Are. yeah. Mm, yeah. Good point. Um, and the, and yeah. the Fury Road is like. <laughs> We've we've become Pangea again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan of the Mad Max. I think I think the thing is. So the bottom line is that he's kind of he doesn't represent an ideal in the way that James Bond represents an ideal, at least to the Aussie man. I don't think the Aussie man aspires yes. to be Mad Max as the British man aspires to be James Bond. Yeah. No. But makes for some <clears throat> wicked cool cosplay. And Mad Max might inspire some good cosplay, but 
Tell you what, Ray from the Bond Armory inspires me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're listening to us, uh, it's doubtful that you don't listen to him. But if you are one of the weirdos of the world that is not <laughs> listening to uh, or subscribe to his YouTube channel or following him on Instagram, do yourself a favour <laughs> <laughs> and bloody do it. A bit uh, fun. Because we love Ray here and we love the Bond Armory. Um, and uh, yeah, wash your damn hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> Um, now, that's the end of fan mail. I'm closing up the fan mail bag. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I want to get serious here for a second. Oh, no. A couple of episodes ago... What's what have happening? you done? I, um, I, I made a statement that I deeply regret. Is it's, this about all the... It's been haunting me, actually, every, every, every night. I have barely slept. The murders? Uh, no, the murders I'm fine with. This is something much, this much, is much something bigger much, than much it. worse. In the episode... I think it was 41, Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Call, call it. Um, I said that Billy Baldwin <laughs> had not been in a good film. And I want to apologise to Billy Baldwin because I confused him for his brother Stephen. <laughs> You've been in some films that were fine. <laughs> Steven. How dare you. Which one? Which one was uh, in Mr. Murder? The, uh, the Dean Koontz adaptation. I would wager Steven. I would Steven. wager Steven. Mm. If it wasn't good? No. It was probably Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> This is a part of a long-running feud that Brandon has with the, the Baldwin yeah. family. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, the others are fine. It's more just Stephen. Just It's just Stephen. Just Stephen, yeah. So, retracting the yeah. the quibble with, with Billy. Billy. He's okay. Yeah, Alec is very good. Uh, Stephen. Come How on, mate. You. Come, Come on. on. Get it together. Come on, mate. You know. <laughs> See, this is politicising. This is how you turn an apology around. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, but turn it into a statement. But uh, look, I just wanted to, you know, get serious there. And um, uh, oh, thanks, thanks Valid. for, for letting me have, have the floor. You're very welcome. You're Thank very you. well. We're glad you can air your dirty laundry. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you something, folks. It's what? time for everyone's favourite segment. What's this? Give the people what, what they want. want. That's right, it's, oh, back. it's back. It's back. It's back. Oh, it's back, baby. I hope you're bloody ready for it. All right, let's move through I this nice am. and quick. You <laughs> never <laughs> are. I know, I know. It's, it's, the, it's the segment everyone loves to hate, and I just uh, love to love. Um, which part of the barrel did you collect these ones? <laughs> was the barrel full? Or oh, were no, you it was yeah, full was all right. Things? It was full all right, and then I threw everything out, and then I scraped right? the bottom of it. Oh. And I found, lying oh. at the bottom of this little barrel here, a little game that I like to call a little more information. More? Oh, oh, oh that's not bad. Now, a little more information uh, Don't is... Don't you dare ruin his good name <laughs> information. <laughs> oh, it'll be, be dragged through the mud. No, no, no. Just kidding. This is a kind of game, this is a kind of uh, like a guess who, guess what type game. You haven't uh, figured it out yet? Or... No, no, no. What's I know how to play what? it. You know, well, guess what, as in, a, as in an object. I'm looking for some information. So, where you know, you boys must correctly guess. <laughs> yes, that's right. You're looking for information. You boys must correctly guess the Bondian person, place, or thing before your opponent. Before him, as yes. in on the table in front of him. Yes. No. Well, I'm going to need a little more information. <laughs> <laughs> the catch is. You only, you're only drip-fed a drip small fed. amount of information. I don't do well with injections. At no. a time. What? Right? Uh, nope. <laughs> Clear as mud. <laughs> perfect, perfect. You know it. Next one. <laughs> Next game is Pay Attention 007. Pay yeah. Attention 007. Right, yeah. It's a test of memory under pressure. Oh. Uh. Now, look, we may want to film this one. What? If this one gets through, we might want to film it. <laughs> oh, God. You will be shown a series of Bondian images, and it is your job to recite the correct images in the right order this before the timer it runs again. out. This is also literally Trump with his man, woman, person, <laughs> camera. <laughs> <laughs> Very complicated text. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. 
<laughs> so go, I'm not clear on either of these games so far. That's all right. That's all right. Third and final game. I can't believe you're just moving on. <laughs> What's it's happening? Like, keep it up, keep it up. <laughs> I'll explain it on the day. <laughs> Some of these might not get through. People have to vote for these. Number three. Number three is called Gun Car Drink. Gun, Gun what? Car Did Drink. Did this come out of the previous game? No. As like a... <laughs> <laughs> Images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, played the, I played the last game and then came up with this game because of it. Now, this sounds illegal, but I assure you it's very much uh, perfectly within the bounds of the law. This is of a... Of which country? Of <laughs> <laughs> international waters. Oh, this God. is a quick-fire game where you must correctly guess whether the name I read out is a gun, a car, or a drink. Oh, oh that's, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Where'd you steal that from? All three of these are really good this week. They, well, I'm unclear uh, on what the first one exactly so is. So am I, but I love the Roger Moore information angle, so I'm in. <laughs> me too, me too. I like the angle. I like the angle. The angle's good. Um, all right, so there's your three games, guys. You've got a little more information. Mm. All right. You've got Pay Attention 007, yep. your image memory game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then, yeah. And then uh, Gun Car Drink. Yeah. Which Gun one is it? Gun Car Drink. Yeah. Pay yeah. Attention 007. Yeah. It comes up on the screen... I say something. Uh, pay attention, 007. And you want to is, film it. There'll be a series of there'll be a series like of a images, and, orange. And, you, and you have epilepsy. To, kind y- of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe just, <laughs> just don't stare too hard at the screen. Right. It'll the rapid fire images. Yep, you have yep. to name those images in the right order, which in which what they appear. What if I appear. can't keep up? Then you lose, and Brandon will win. What if I can't keep up? Then uh, uh, Darby will win. But what if we both can't keep up? Then I will win. Oh, well, we can't have that. And what's the title we're playing for, for any of these? Well, we'll see, depending on the game that gets through. All right. Who pays attention? So if you win it, your title will be Darby Deck, who pays attention. Yeah. Mine would be the sound with the golden gun, the golden pun, who Who pays pays attention. attention. All right. Yeah, right. Okay. And Jake's not going to win it. You never know. (laughs) No, no. I'm pretty confident. Um, So... We put it to the people. All, All right. right. All right. See you All next right week. <laughs> no, not next week. Not actually. next week. Oh no, that's true. Yeah, We're so it'll be two, two two weeks, weeks to run this poll. They've got a word right. for that. Yeah, sure. we might get some oh. serious numbers here. Fort, pillow fort, pillow fort. So we'll see you in a pillow fort. See you in a pillow fort. Oh, God. Awesome. All right. Well, here's one for you. Oh. Now, have you got a chapter title? I do. Okay. Yeah. You better. Because we've never missed one. <laughs> Fact check. What was your again? Uh, fish and lips. Fish and lips. <laughs> fish and lips. Not bad for That's on the spot, good. too. You did very well. <laughs> Previously on the Death by one. Otto's Fixation. Death via. What? Oh, no, it's by. Is it by or via? Yeah. We need to get this straight. Yeah, by. Death by? By. I've been writing by. In I'm all pretty the sure YouTube. it's by. As... The original author that penned the title I mean, says by. No. It via Same or thing. by? Same thing. Death by. Death it's by. Death by autoerotic asphyxiation. asphyxiation. If that's yeah. the joke. Yeah. That's the joke. Yeah. Yeah. But if something is via something, doesn't it's necessarily it's mean that it's by something. It's different yeah. Yeah. On the way to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it in the end. Depends how the story ends. We'll, we'll figure it out in the end. <laughs> Walking along the seaside promenade on their way to Patricia's apartment to finish their fish and chips, Bond and Patricia are caught in the flighty furora of a spontaneous... Don't write it if you can't say it. (laughs) Rule number one. Fury Road. That's it, that's it. Mad Max reference. Uh, Of a spontaneous and suicidal seagull attack. Mm, mm, mm. Bond finds refuge in a small red phone booth hoping to report back to M and to avoid Steve-O who is fast approaching but eventually chased away in a flurry of flapping wings that's it, abridged, yeah. that's sort of what that's happened yeah. Bond is unfortunately unable to get through to headquarters due to several kamikaze gulls hurtling themselves death beak gulls. first death gulls, death gulls into the phone booth in a last chance dash to save Patricia before she is possibly lifted off the ground yes. by a squadron of ferocious birds. It was oh, about to happen. Yeah. 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 Bond sacrifices his greasy dinner, which yeah. gives the pair enough time to shield themselves. The euphemism. Uh-huh. To shield <laughs> themselves <laughs> within the little red phone booth in front of the school beside Oof. the sea the beside day before the, sea, the, the day Queen day arrives. <laughs> 
Chapter 4. Salve Regina. Salve Regina. I just told you ah, not to write it if you can't queen. say it. Oh, the Queen's... Queen's... Salvation. Hail, Queen. Hail. Hail. Apparently is the Latin translation. Ah. The Southern Cross has vanished in the dawn. Over the township of Cairns. What happened with the birds? The, you'll find out. All right. The brilliance of a summer day has broken. It is a day of high summer and of high history for Australia. There'll be no work done today in Cairns. Thousands of citizens are on the move, swarming into the streets like bees in the sun. For it is the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Streamers lash the sides of buildings. Soldiers march in formation. Women shield themselves in their seats under the shade of a broadsheet newspaper, while the young mm. ones wave their Union Jacks in the sun. Images. Images. A town is waiting. And at its edge, the Queensland Premier and Town Mayor is waiting too. Queensland. Queensland! Oh, my goodness me. For a queen is coming. A queen they have never seen. Then out of the morning sun steams the royal liner Gothic. What? That's the name of the ship. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. You did your research. Ah, ah, ah. Like a good fact checker. Out of... Why would they call it Gothic? Oh. What's wrong with that family? Mm. <laughs> It's the Queen you're talking about. Out of the Coral Sea and into the radiant port of Cairns, the first ship ever to pass Cape Grafton flying the Royal Standard. In the great white ship, riding at anchor, royal as a swan, is the Queen they have never seen. Cannons fire from on high. <laughs> Ferries and sailboats adorned with pennants and people blanket the shallow waters of the coastal town. I don't know what that sounds like. <laughs> For her, a sailor's daughter, a sailor's wife, a ruler of seafaring peoples, the town has prepared a sailor's greeting. Where's James Bond and what happened with the birds? We're gonna get there, we're gonna get there. <laughs> To the shores of this her southern realm, the royal barge bears Elizabeth II. By the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Australia, and her other realms and territories, Queen, head of the Commonwealth, defender of the faith, takes her first step onto the embellished promenade of the coastal township of Cairns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <clears throat> It was far back in the rows of endless locals. Is this her? No. It was far back this in the fun. rows of endless locals who had turned out to catch a glimpse of Her Majesty where Bond and Patricia could be found. Sandwiched amongst the spectators, their appearance rather tattered, having spent the night together bunkered down inside the tiny red phone booth. Oh, this is what happened with the birds. Protecting them from the barricade of barbaric birds. And the sex. <laughs> <laughs> Stone the bloody crows There she is oh, Isn't she beautiful And he's very handsome too Oh what a pair Oh and to think they've come all this way to see us And I look like this Muttered Patricia mm -hmm. Never you mind dear I think you look radiant <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can get a better view Bond began to shuffle his way through the crowd Tightly gripping the hand of Patricia he wasn't going to let a horde of Australians get in his way of a good glimpse of his sovereign. Even He's if... my queen, after all. <laughs> you peasants. <laughs> you peasants. Damn convicts. <laughs> Even if he did bear the signs of the pasty white droppings of a few feathered fiends betwixt his bedraggled blonde locks. Oh, oh. he did the bees. You were supposed to do the bees. Mm. No, you were supposed to do the... Yeah, I didn't do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> By now, the queen had spoken with her natural eloquence of the beauty of the very of the vast nation she had been exploring and the delight with which she has taken in sharing the experience with so many who call this great south land their home with assistance from her various aides her majesty and the duke take their seat in a large open topped land rover Ooh. accompanied by a small number of high profile trusted advisers I hope there's no book depository around. Mm. <laughs> the grassy knoll. Oh, 
an open window. Down the long, wide street of the town rolls the royal motorcade, flanked by flocks of smiling subjects. Oh, the flocks like birds. Oh. Oh. One subject in particular. C, 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 C. Yeah, just yeah. right there. Yeah. One subject in particular, one who has dedicated his life in the service of Her Majesty. You've already introduced him. Yeah. Steve-o. Now stands at the edge of the road, sunny sweetheart by his side. I was impressed with that line. <laughs> Bond was absent. Bond was absent-mindedly recalling the last time he had the good fortune of meeting Her Highness when something familiar caught his eye. Oh, he's met her before. Oh, that's... that's not the Queen. That's a man in a dress. <laughs> The slender figure standing at the right side of Her Majesty. <gasps> As the motorcade approached him... The Duke. Lipping, lip, living, lixing, oh, Levington. Yeah, Levington. 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 <laughs> it became... Lennington. It became oh. clear. Otto Doss. The pristine grey suit. The Otto thin... Otto The... Th- <laughs> <laughs> sorry, 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 I'll let you finish, but... Otto Doss. <laughs> the thin-lined face... <gasps> The harsh smile that masked a dark kind of madness. <gasps> the ivory cane was a new addition due to a deep and damaging knife wound, Bond mm-hmm. presumed. Otto does. Mm-hmm. And although half concealed from the harsh southern sun by a fedora and dark rounded sunglasses, oh. Bond was certain that the menacing figure, standing beside the Queen, and now seemingly firmly within the inner circle of the royal family, was without a doubt... Otto Doss. <laughs> Before Bond had a chance to act, the motorcade appeared, looming beside him. And from on high, Doss locks eyes with the ragged Bond. Oh no, what are the chances? What are the chances? Frozen, Doss is confronted by the ghost before him. With a kind a of ghost. clinical calmness, Doss quickly whispers to a guard behind him, and suddenly and surreptitiously, so as not to alarm a soul, especially Her Majesty. No, I don't want to let her know what's mm. going on. Bond feels several eyes on him from every direction, and the blunt prodding of a pistol in his back. Hands seize Bond and Patricia. Good morning, friend. Oh, <gasps> of course. I think at best you and the lady come with us. No, you Quietly, can't. that is. Would be a shame to ruin such a momentous occasion. He's back. He's dead, isn't he? No, he's not dead. Not he at all. He's early chopper. Very much Did alive. He? Yeah. As Bond and Bond Patricia... No, no. He to death on the tanker and he blew up in the explosion. No, no, he got No, away. he escaped he on the helicopter away. with away. Doss. Yeah, Boss, b- b- Bond... Our boss, boss. <laughs> was uh, left tied inside the container and, and then right. they took off. Did anyone die on that? Oh, yeah, yeah, Jill Bond. Jill Bond, Jill yeah, Bond. I'm that's still right. getting that's over right. that. You killed her! You yeah, killed yeah. Plenty I can't people. remember there's been so many murders. We introduce right. a character named Jill Bind as 003. You build a history and then what do you do? You, you kill, kill her off. You Bloody kill. stupid. Yeah, anyway, okay. anyway, we're nearly done. Hang in there. All right. As Bond and Patricia are steadily led away from the crowd, the royal procession fades into the distance, but not before the wiry Doss takes a moment to turn and bid Bond one final farewell with the tip of his hat. Oh. And that's it. Oh. Oh. Captured Bond. He's captured. constantly getting captured. He's just <laughs> always captured. <laughs> Captured Bond, eh? All, All right. right. Now we've got... Not quite up. captured. Seized. 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 That's true. That's accurate. Yeah. We started something last time. What's that? Where at the end, the two people listening give a three-word three review. Three-word review. Oh, of now the I, don't, story. I don't know about this. I so, like this. This is right. a good new tradition. Darby, good you haven't segment. been able to give a three-word review yet, so I'd like <laughs> you to give a three-word review. Uh, okay. Um... Uh, Jake is this feels very like a gross. roasting. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, visual. Oh, that's a word. Um, uh, 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 expected. Oh. Um, mm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Visual, expected, rogy. That's my three words. All right. Yours can be a sentence. Mine, I chose to just have yeah, ideas. No, it's just words. I like, I, like, I like that. I'm going to say... We need words. Please leave this silence in. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But sex... 
I'm disappointed we've skipped we the sex. The sex. <laughs> oh. Maybe we have sex in, Later. in captivity. In captivity. If she doesn't die. <laughs> chapter wow. 5, mating in captivity. Yeah. She, she better watch out when it uh, comes around to my chapter. Yeah. I'm oh, excited God. by this, though. I, I was wondering if how we were going to get Otto into yeah, this. Yeah, it was getting pretty late in the day. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a building suspension. Yeah, That's a good yeah. way to work him in. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What's he yeah. doing? How'd he get there? That's for Brandon to figure oh. out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nazis. Well, my two-word review is fact check. Three word. Ah. ah. Segway. Now, fact how check many segue. fact check segue? Three words. There yeah. you go. All right. Well, how many feeding. episodes has it been since we did a shout out of the week? Oh, uh, Brandon, none. you said none. ten. It's been none. Yeah, but last... since the we last... did one today. One. Did... One week. No, God. <laughs> you asked this last week. You said ten. Dub, what do you reckon? How long's it been? Since 42. Yeah. That was the last episode, wasn't it? Yeah. Thir- 13 episodes. 13, you reckon? 13. I'll That's stand by it. I'll You're going to say 10? Yeah. Dub says 13. Yeah. It was 14. Oh. oh. The last... Uh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. The last shout out of the week came at our very first top five episode. That was three and a half months before that. Yes. Well, do we have one this week? Because this isn't good. <laughs> yeah, I did it for... You did one? Yeah, I did one for... Uh... Oh, I didn't do it. Do it. <laughs> we actually, I actually do have a shout-out. Fuck it, I do have a shout-out. Oh, okay. 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 I this would is... like to shout-out... We've shouted him out before, but I would like to shout-out Corey... Corey! ...from another James Bond podcast. Yay! Um, he found... I, keen listeners of the show would know that I have... Uh, pretty much all of the Bond soundtracks on vinyl, mm-hmm. mm. but I could not for the life of me find a good quality copy of Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Well, Corey only bloody found one in Canada. Bloody good on you, Corey. And sent it all the way over oh, to Sydney. What Amazing. And it sounds fantastic. Of course. Of course. There you are. There's our shout out. There it is. Fact checked. It's taken three and a half months to do that. Yeah. No, we really... did one last week. Did we do one last week? Yeah, we did. Hmm. Bond writing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I believe it was your your shout out of the week. I will endeavour to bring a shout out. We've got I to lift our game. We've got to lift our game. I won't promise that they'll always be real. Right. <laughs> yeah, You're going to shout you. out yeah. fake fake people. Fake people. Fair enough. Fair enough. Darbs. Uh oh. You said they wouldn't have shot Spy Hard. On video, it would have to be film. Yeah, yeah, I stand by that for you. Yeah, yeah. that would be my buzzer. Oh, <laughs> for right. fact check. We'll re-record your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay, great. Uh, Darbs, you are correct. It was shot on. Take a guess. What do you reckon? Film. Yeah. What do you reckon they did? What, what do you reckon they used? Ah, uh, well, Mr. maybe Mr. They movie shot it on... camera film guy. Maybe, maybe, maybe they shot it on sixteen. Sixteen, you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm gonna say thirty-five. Bang. Just a 35. Well, well that I was just, That's pretty yeah. obvious. Right. One. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was 35. Yeah. Yeah. It was 35. Eastman Kodak film stock. Oh, Eastman Kodak film stock. Yeah. I don't know that. What else was shot on? Tell the people. Um, he didn't do it. All right. No, but I'll tell you what camera I would, they that used. That was though. a gamble that for me because I thought yeah. maybe you would have done yeah, that. I was yeah. like, oh, if I, I could call pick my a bluff. Man, this will be it. <laughs> <laughs> if I could guess one, this will be but it. That's what the people want, right? Right. Is yeah, that sort of level of... yeah. Um, the camera they used, though, Dubs, was uh, a little movie oh, camera called the Ultra on. Cam. Right. Ooh. Which was built as a rival to Panavision the by Hypercam. Frank Leonetti. Cosgrove. Frank Leonetti. Remember that name. It's going to be important. All right. Oh, that was a, that was <laughs> a wink, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a wink I'm glad you didn't see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, because I, I mentioned this because there was a lot of talk last week well, about the, the look wink, of the, the film. Wink isn't important. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about the, the look of the film and who was responsible for this bloody mess. Yeah. Um, Frankly, and Eddie Cosgrove. So, <laughs> the cinematographer for Spy Hard was a gentleman by the name of John R. Leonetti. Leonetti. Oh, oh a family oh, affair. Oh, yeah. The son of the guy who made the camera. Oh, oh shit. Mm. He should have known inside much job. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't inside now, do you want to know what else Mafia. he shot? Lee and Eddie. Lee and Eddie. Oh. Yeah. Do you want to know what else he shot? Uh, he, JFK. Sa- he, he shot heaps. Of th- God, don't say that. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. RFK. 
he's, 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 TDK. he's been a cine on a whole bunch of stuff, but JBC. there's one film in particular that came out two years before Spy Hard. What do you reckon he shot? 94. What was big and was good? Because I feel like <clears throat> this is the misdirection we're heading. The Mask. The, oh, yeah. That was yeah. 94. Shawshank Redemption was 94, but I'm pretty was sure that was, that was Roger Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else was 94? Jurassic Park. But he didn't do that. Would it be John Arley and Eddie doing that? Uh, Schindler's? Who shot Schindler? That wasn't 94, was it? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Just tell us, Jake. Uh, no, 94. No, yeah. I'm going to guess. Have a stab. I feel like we probably mentioned it in the episode. I'm yep. going to say Same. Naked Gun 33 and a uh, third. Ooh. Third. Are you going to go with that two dubs? I'm going to go with... Movie Buff Man? 94. <laughs> 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 nah, got nothing. Nothing? Nothing. How about smoking? It was the mask. Oh, what? he it was shot the mask. the mask. He shot the mask. That was him. Oh, mate, that stick to the camera he him. used for the mask. Nailed it. He, Which camera did he use for the he mask? He was respond. He used. No, I'm not going to say. <laughs> that. But Damn it. I mean, considering that his dad invented that uh, ultra cam, Beta Mac, Beta Cam, <laughs> Ultra Cam. <laughs> um, now, look, he shot the mask. He also shot. The two Mortal Kombat films, Joe Ooh, Dirt. Got we style. brought that up. Welcome well, to the wasn't jungle. This one better. Piranha 3D. Ooh. Oh, and that's a maestro. Insidious. Oh yeah, Insidious is that horror film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scary yeah. One. His latest credits are as director, beginning oh. with Annabelle in 2014. Oh, he's part oh, of the that guy. He's that guy. The, the Conjuring universe. Yeah, yes. yeah. Started really as a cine, moved into thing. directing. Yeah. His brother is. Been like seven <clears throat> films. His brother Matthew is a, a very accomplished cine as well. Crazy. Um, but they're mafia, right? They um, <clears throat> well, they're film mafia. It's an incredible family. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't don't come and find us. <laughs> What's he wink <laughs> um, But I reckon I know who the real culprit is. Oh yeah, who's responsible? The director. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, <laughs> director Rick Friedberg. Nothing against, look, nothing against Mr. Friedberg. No, I want it to look shitty. The man <laughs> went out and made an $18 million film. That's an impressive feat. I haven't done it. Lots of people haven't yep, done it. Yep. Sure. Yep, I've sure. done it a couple times. But <laughs> but that's about as, it, as far as it goes. That's about as it. That's as, as <laughs> that's about as it. That's about as it, ladies He gentlemen. pitched his son's script called Spy Hard oh. to Leslie Nielsen. Are you, it was his son's script? Yes, Jason. Oh, shit, I'm writing on this. To Leslie Nielsen, after Rick directed Leslie in a comedy instruction video Rick called who? Bad Golf Friedberg. Made Easier. Oh, oh, right. Friedberg. Bad Friedberg. Golf Made Easier. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You can check it out. Nope. Good, good call. Good call. <laughs> Look, Nielsen liked the script, and Spy Hard was made, but that basically killed his career. He hasn't been he hasn't been heard of oh, since. Maybe well, the Leonidas got, got him. The scary movie, so. Les- oh, oh, fried. No, fried. I thought you were Sorry, talking about. I'm, I'm no, so no. lost today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I'm glad. Keep I'm up. Not There's alone. a lot of names <laughs> here. I think the Leonetti's got to him. I reckon they might have. Yeah. All of a sudden, Leonetti's are off directing Conjuring and yeah. uh, old Friedberg. Old Friedberg? Friedberg? Tell you what, Friedberg was doing. Friedberg went on to be a field producer for the Real Housewives of Orange County. Where he belonged. Bit of money there. Bit of cash there. He is, however, credited as one of the writers and producer of a comedy animated film called Chili Beach, Ah. The World is Hot Enough. Oh boy, it is. Oh yeah. Is it? Oh yeah. It's on YouTube. It's another Bond parody. What is that? Oh. Chili Beach, The World is Hot Enough. An animated one. Yes. Let's watch it. Put it on the list. It's on the list now. Put it on oh, the wheel. I saw the opening sequence, no, it's though. It's on the list now, isn't it? So. Oh, all right. May we Returning never meet James it. James Bond May we director, never meet it. Rick um, Friedberg. No, wait. Is it him? He was the producer and he was one of the, the writers producer. of it. Could be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. What is the weird aspect ratio that Netflix uses? Two to one. Two to one. Brandon said two to one. Uh, and was that the same aspect <laughs> ratio used for Spy Heart? Oh, no. No. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Spy Hard's aspect ratio was 185 to 1. 
There's yeah, always a yeah, trick yeah. punch. There. Yeah, Netflix there prefers sixteen nine. That's what they prefer. Yeah, that's and what they'd like you to. Do. And they've gotten into trouble in the past for screening films and shows that weren't originally intended for that aspect. How ratio. dare you! Oh, but, for cropping out stuff. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You just don't. That's a line you do not. Mm. 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 The two to one aspect ratio is a relatively new Mind thing. Mind Hunter uses it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Finch is a very big fan. Finch likes it. House this this new aspect ratio, yes, House of Cards. It is new. It's considered new. Is it? I thought it was in the nineties. Yeah, that's relatively new as aspect ratios no, we're go. Men. We're old men. Created by legendary cinematographer Vittorio Storaro. What if we do two and one? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Who was the cinematographer for Chinatown, Dick Tracy, oh, Apocalypse wow. Now, The Last Emperor. He's a three-time Oscar winner. He proposed a universal format he called Yeah, because it works for TV as well as the cinema. Wow. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, basically, a unity of images to unify all theatrical and television productions. Jurassic World, House of Cards, as you say, Strange Things, Mindhunter. Which Hunter. only works if you make the screen two to one. No, you got a little black bag. Yeah, but then it doesn't fit, so it's not universal. But it's but it's only you can stretch uh, a cinema it's minor. Screen. It's minor on a TV screen. Uh, doesn't I don't know. Bother you. I think uh. I'm calling it a fail. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. All I right. think it's the future. Well, uh, there's a lot of people. A lot yeah. of people would agree with you because yeah. it seems to I be this happy balance. Well, then between... let's make all future televisions and monitors two to one ratio. No, because then sixteen nine will be squeezed on the edges. Yeah, well, get rid of it. Phase out 69. Phase it out. Phase it out. It's the future. It's well, the all future. the movies that are 69. Yeah, we because don't I, get to because watch I don't anymore. want to stick with 169 just so that I've got two to one in with black bars. How are you going to edit videos? You're going to edit in a new pixel ratio. Yeah, get another yeah, new monitor. <laughs> you heard it here. Oh, we do it with 4 3 video now, don't we? Yeah. I still watch old episodes of uh, whatever was shot in 4 3. Yeah, but you're shooting yourself in the foot. Do you see? Yeah. We're shooting ourselves in the foot with all these different bloody aspect ratios. I can't keep up with if them. If it's going to be with two, television... 2, 3, 5, 1, 8, 2, 3, 9, 7... What about what? 6 and 1 and 3? Yeah. What about it? <laughs> what a bloody about it? What about this, though? I want to know what the people think about that. <laughs> Who's with me? Let's burn this fucker down. <laughs> Well, you're saying abolish 16 as a monitor Abolish one of them. One of them must die. <laughs> You gotta start. A, you gotta start a, an aspect war. Yeah. 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 What about this? Was Nicole Kidman in the Street Fighter movie? No, I'm gonna say no. Brandon said no, no. Brandon said she, she was, was the blonde it. with the blue outfit. Yeah, he's an idiot. It's, no, it's the other Aussie that I. I she always was in get... BMX Bandits. Yeah. She was in BMX. Bandits. I get Kidman and Minogue mixed up all what, the it was time. Minogue? I it was think it's Kylie Fighter. Minogue. Is you the... reckon Kylie Minogue? No. I think I think Kylie Minogue. She's got blonde pigtails and like a blue dress. No, I reckon she's that one from Street Fighter. I reckon it's. Uh... Uh, Charlize Theron. Right, not an Aussie. Not an Aussie. Oh, I could swear. That's an interesting it. call. I always get Kidman and Minogue mixed up because I have said that Minogue was in Stepford Wives on a forum once, and I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the Stepford Wives uh, forum yeah, yeah. would have it's ripped my, you to shreds. I do, I do another the podcast. podcast. <laughs> the Stepford, Brandon McClellan and the Stepford Wives <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I would listen. 1994's Jean-Claude Van Damme starring Street That's Fighter right. film. Yes, he's the lead. No, it was not Nicole Kidman. Uh-huh. Yeah, we know that. It was another Aussie. Oh. But not so Kylie Minogue. Not Kylie. Known more for her music than her acting these days, it was bloody Kylie Minogue. Oh, hey! my God. Absolutely nailed it. When bloody I saw the production H&X still, I saw the production still, I was like, yep, blonde in the blue suit. There she is. Has she the, got blonde uh, pigtails? She's got the blonde pigtails. Oh, She's there wow. in the pose with her fist of cuffs. Wow. And the bad guy is the, the dad from the Adams Family. Oh, one for the fact Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like you his... said that last I week. I did That's say that. right. Oh, That's right. Yeah, yeah, that was said. Um, now, is this this one? Here we go. Is the Citroen that the <clears throat> al- that the oh, that the Ally drives I stand by it. it's the same in Spy car. Hard, the exact same model Citroen from That's For Your right. Eyes Only? Jake yes. and Darby. We said yes. We Brandon said was yes. not convinced. We, we, said we no. were united on we this. We were united. Doesn't happen very Doesn't often. happen very often. But united against Brandon. Yes. Oof. The Citroen. In For Your Eyes Only, as most listeners are well aware, is a 2CV6 club. The yellow one. The yellow one, that's right. The Citroen in Spy Hard 
is a 1982 <gasps> 2CV6 Charleston. Charleston. Slightly different. So it is. It pretty much is it's the same, the same car, with, a, with a new, but not newer, the same slightly exact newer body. Model. But not the same exact bottle. Right. 100%. Bottle? <laughs> Bottle. Did you say bottle? Bottle. I don't want to have to fact check that. <laughs> no, I think he said model. I, I think he said bottle. Fact check. <laughs> but, <laughs> but given that For Your Eyes only came out in 81, and this is an 82 model, you dirty devils. No, no. Because the it's 2012 not, Mazda 6 <laughs> and the 2018 Mazda 6 They're pretty much the different. same. Yeah. But look, you, it, we're down to the, the, the devils in the detail here. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, a, well. it's a Charleston or a club model, but at the end of the day, it's a 2CV6. See? Same car. Yeah. Was the henchman... Were the henchman. No, was the henchman. <laughs> was the henchman Tommy from the Power Rangers uh, were movie? Were the henchman oh. Tommy. I said no, right? No, you... No, no, you basically did say... <laughs> every on. time I saw him, I thought, oh, maybe he's Tommy, but no, 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 no. Yeah. So I had to Tommy follow it up. Tommy killed the guy. Did he? What? No, someone killed the guy. No, the Red, the Red Ranger. Ranger killed oh. someone. Yes. I'm going to have to... With a machete. Really? Well, attempted. No, he actually... Alleged. Alleged. He's in jail. <laughs> is he? Pretty I sure. Thought it was for attempted. Slice. The factory. Is the name... <laughs> Slice is the name of the henchman, played by Carlos Lauchu. Oh. In 1995's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, and what? 1997's Turbo, a Power Ranger movie, Tommy, the White Ranger, White is played Ranger. by... Jason David Frank. Oh, oh, you son you of a b- bitch. I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> you son of a bitch, I'm in. Uh, but you could see um, Carlos Lauchu in Stargate. Okay. Oh, the movie? As the White Ranger? Uh, the movie in, in the movie. The, oh, in the movie wow. David Arnold scored that. Oh, there you go. There's a Bond link. reference. Um, what does the shirt say on the knife guy that keeps getting stabbed? Oh, yeah. Oh. I said, I heart to party. <laughs> Bre- I, and I said Bre- something Bre- to like, I too heart dance parties. Absolutely, that's exactly what you said. <laughs> Brandon, you're a dirty devil, I was right. Yeah. Oh. I've got the photo here if you want to see it. But it is. No, no, I never want to see, see that guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the character meant to be that follows Hulk Hogan? Um, the Darby, TV Hillary, Hillary, Hillary. Yeah, yeah, Darby, yeah. you said Hillary Clinton because you thought that she had some anti bullering thing. Anti- <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to fact check that. You heard it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> this is our new running gag for the next 50. <laughs> Every stumble test gets fact checked. <laughs> oh, foot and mouth disease spear. Brandon said he initially thought that it was, it was, Dr. Bill. It was G- Gloria Allred. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but believes it's probably some Dr. Phil type morning show pop psychologist or something like that. Yeah, I stand by that. Credited as Steele's tag team member, yeah. Dr. Joyce Brothers was an American psychologist, You're kidding. television personality, wow. advice columnist, and writer. You got it. Yeah. She first became famous in 1955 for winning the top prize on the American game show, The $64,000 Question. The bloody man with the. Golden pun. And she yeah, also sound, went on to appear in The Naked Gun. Oh, oh did she? So Spy Hard was her second Leslie Nielsen. Well, third, really, because Joyce... she's actually credited for Police Squad. What well, was the, the actual TV show? Oh, the TV it show. It was actually her. Joyce Brothers. She played that herself. That was actually Joyce Brothers. That was actually Joyce Brothers. Bullshit. Tagging Hulk Hogan. Wow. Wow. Yeah, she seemed like... Yeah, I got that vibe that she was someone She had was. her own show on... Did she like... know she was mocking 2016 Hillary Clinton? In her, I think she did. In 1996, Hillary. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am ignoring one particular fact check this week about uh, why. Uh, well, we're nearly there. What though. toy um, had interchangeable arms on it? Oh, well, I wanted to find this out, mate. There's heaps, Brandon. Right. Yeah. You're being silly, yeah. um, Mr. Potato Head. You can change his arms. There you go. So that's not the one we were thinking that's of. That's one yeah. example. Uh, one for the fact check. <laughs> One last thing to mention. Quick. We never actually call the villain by his real name in, in the podcast. Oh. What do oh, we call yeah. him? Ray, Darby, Ray you, you called him Stormfront. <laughs> That's right. I called him... No, no, no. It's General Faulkner, thinking I'm being serious. And then we all eventually decided on General Store. 
Uh, his actual <laughs> name. <laughs> his actual name. That's much better. Is General Rancor. Uh, so, ah, Rancor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there you go. There you go. We've all been checked today. Yeah. Uh, and, check for uh, nits. Check for nits. Check for lies. Check for facts. That's fact check. Wow, you're hey. done. Trey Jake is over. Trey Jake is over. Wow. Uh, uh, we got so through it. Nearly a solid hour. Uh, all the Thanks Jake. for joining us, folks. We'll see you again next week for more Trey Jake. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hang on. What? Uh, it's time for our favourite segment. This is a tricky one. This is a tricky one. Preconceived notions. It's almost today. like we shouldn't yeah. do it. But we should. Who, because it's tradition. <laughs> One, list one thing about each other's list. So I'm going to let you two boys go first. Oh, okay. Me. Okay, talk about Brandon. Where are you going? One thing he's going to turn the light on because oh, it's going it's dark. Going dark I was le- you're not meant to mention it because then Sorry. the people at home don't. Yeah, they yeah, think we're right. in a studio and that we have assistants. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we drink bubble water. I do drink bubble water. Oh. One thing about Brandon's top six list. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. yeah, yeah. Is that I'm not convinced Daniel Craig will be number one. Nah, you're wrong. You I don't should think, be convinced. I don't think I Craig think is going to be number one. I think deep down you are convinced. I'm on the fence, but I'm just sticking my neck out <laughs> and saying that it's not going to be Craig. I don't, I'm not going to say who it is, but I, I'm... You think it's Brosnan? It could be Brosnan. <laughs> uh, one thing about Darby's list... What are you doing, Brandon? Do I think... Oh, I was just doing me. Yeah, right. Jake, Jake goes first. You do, you <laughs> Jake goes first, then. Let's We've only that. just been listening yeah. to him for a bloody day. JJ continues, ladies and gentlemen, um, after the hour. <laughs> Be back after this word from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Jake Spear. <laughs> oh, we've got to do that. We've got to do some kind of Jake hour. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Um, Dubs. You said something early on in this episode that you, you thought, bring out the lawyers, that you thought your list might be a little bit um, predictable. Is that the word you uh, yeah, used? Yeah, predictable or obvious. It was one, it was of, one of those two. words. Mm. Now, when my mind thinks of what an obvious Derby list no would comment. look like, Timothy Dalton's number one. Ooh. That's, really? in my mind, that's what an obvious Derby list looks like. Timothy Dalton's number one. You're clinging to an idea of me. Yeah, I am. And <laughs> that's You have to love me. You have to love the I'm, real me. The real you. Look, the real you does love a bit of Dalton. But... Mm, <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. A bit of brozzy for you. he does love the real you. <laughs> Connery's at the top. Oh, Ooh, for Dubs. For Dubs. For Dubs. Big, bold claim. Mm. Well, Darby, you, you can go now. It's Darby right. time. Uh, Darby, Darby hour. Yeah. Uh, oh, hi, folks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Cut the feed. Cut the feed. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you about my favourite lenses. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 Brandon, I'm going to come to oh, you. Oh, you're going to go for I'm me I'm going to come to you second. He's actually. going oh. for you. Yeah, subvert, subvert. Yeah, oh, okay. Um, Jake. Uh-huh. Uh, one thing about your list. Mm-hmm. Brozzy will be higher than he deserves to be. That's what does it. that even mean? That's it. Mm, okay. Um, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <sighs> You, mm, feeling the crystal ball. Oh, you, yeah. you had a tough time... With five and four. Oh. No comment. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to kind of give me a clue here. That's how, <laughs> <laughs> That's how this thing uh, works. Uh, starting with a B, R, G, A, B, C, D, F, G. Oh my God, he's right. <laughs> Phyllis, Phyllis Diller. Um, uh, one thing about the both of you, but I'll direct it at you because I'm now on you. Oh. Get off him! <laughs> Is uh, I'm interested to see how you boys kind of um, where you place technique, craft, actoring, actoring. Yeah, yeah. In amongst your your choices, because mm. uh, there's different ways you can go with the list. But yeah, Brandon, Craig's number one. Craig's number one. Craig's number you. one. Yeah. Mm. 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 So I've got you saying he's not. Uh, yeah, I don't think he is. All right, my preconceived notions for the two of you are. As follows. 
I think Brosnan is right down the bottom of your How list, How dare you? And I think he's right up the top on yours. Wow. <laughs> I think, though, and this might be being a, giving a little bit of a nod as to how I struggled. I think we all struggled where to precisely put George Lazenby. Interesting. <clears throat> mm. Good one. Good mm. one. Good. Mm. Not, uh, do you know, maybe we just went, no, 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 that's the place. He should be there. Of course he should be there. But I think... There was a struggle. He was probably the one we deliberated over the most. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Maybe I'm giving away my ghost. Now, gentlemen, did you have... Uh-oh. An honourable or dishonourable mention at all going into this? I didn't, but then I thought of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me start you off, because it, technically it's cheating. Because we're only ranking the six officials. Yeah, yeah, we shouldn't do this. We're not taking this into account naughty. other things, but I want to be naughty. Let me <laughs> All right, it. go on. I've got a couple of dishonourable mentions. All right. And starting off <laughs> my dishonourable lench- mentions list, all right, Sit yourself down and take your talking to Sir Sean Connery in, in Never, Never Say, Say Never, Never Again. Again. I nearly oh, put it down. Yeah. How dare, dare you, sir? You. Mm. I get it. We all need a paycheck. And you are a brilliant actor. You don't want to know what I've done. But Never Say Never Again. <laughs> Never Say Never Again very nearly tarnishes the legacy for Ooh. me. And you look like shit in it. Well, <laughs> it just it just it feels so spiteful that it, yeah, that it yeah. colors it colors too much of the man mm. to yeah. me. And so it, it 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 almost really rocks him for me as Bond. Mm. Um my other dishonorable mention is literally everyone in Casino Royale 67. <laughs> yeah. Even though Peter Sellers, we really enjoyed him at the time. Yeah, yeah. That's still not James Bond. <laughs> and how dare you? How dare you and shame on you? Well, I have a dishonourable. Please, Do please. You? Uh, the only other obvious candidate left on the table, oh. Mr. Barry Nelson. <laughs> oh. Ruined a legacy before it had even started. My God. <laughs> How many actors can you say that about? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing Did, more need be said. <laughs> anything for you, Jake? I know no, you didn't make no, one. No, no dishonourable? No, no dishonourables, no honourables. I stick purely... To the official Eon Productions. Well, so. I, just to spite Brandon, I did have an honourable. So that I. was uh, Peter Sellers in oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wish I could say to spite you in return, but my honourable mention is from Casino Royale 54. Oh. But it's the guy who played Plays. Felix Slider. Yes, the oh, Aussie one. who should yes. be Bond. Yes. He should have I been I love that bombed. alternate reality. Um, now, Jake, as is tradition... You will be going first. You didn't have any dishonorables or on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so are I feel like lazy. you can go first on the list. Let me just grab a pen and pop where's, where, 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 where's your list? My list is in here. Oh, oh it's in your phone. No, it is actually. It is actually oh, on okay. my phone. But I don't One need of those it. lists. We don't really need a list. No, I don't need a list because I knew this list, the order of this list, the moment I pulled that topic out of that hat. Really? List at yep. first sight. It, it hasn't wavered at all. At all. List at first sight was pretty good. List at first sight, yes, let's acknowledge that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, though, now is the time. Brandon, I think, for me, We've at done least, you're notes. correct. Oh. If, if, to contradict what I just said... What? If there was anyone that I had a problem with where I was placing oh, him, yep. <clears throat> it would have been George. Yeah. yeah. But the only Aussie Bond. The only Aussie Bond. But I am I'm sure in my heart of hearts that I have put him for me in the right place. He is my number six. Oh. Ooh. Poor Lazenby. Poor Lazenby, I I do feel bad about it because I I wish I was more enthusiastic about my fellow countrymen. Um, but having recently seen him, him and the film again on the big screen... Um, him and the film? Him and the film, yeah, separately mm. and as one. Um, he, for me, is probably the weakest part of a great Bond film. Hmm. Ooh. The accent's pretty bad. It's really bad, yeah. And I, you know, Darb's talking about your kind of acting little uh, preconceived notion. 
I, I think he's probably the weakest, and I question a lot of his choices. And look, I, I think maybe the, the fashion and the style probably doesn't help. I think the aesthetic might... Doesn't work for it. Doesn't quite work for me. You know, the frill, frilly shirts and stuff like that stay in my mind a bit. I don't know. There's just an energy about him that I... Uh, I don't know. He's, he's number six. He's number six. I, I agree with you, Jake. Oh, uh, oh. And, and Brandon, you were correct. Because I, I had a... a <clears throat> <laughs> a pang a pang a pang p-a-n-g a pang yes. there was a notable pang as I put him number six pang and, pang and and, and, and and a quick little thing came to me almost like a haiku I call it a bond coup oh. it doesn't respect the rules of haiku but I've done sure. one for each of my bonds excellent fantastic <laughs> <laughs> it's by no means a haiku but bond poetry bond poetry right larrikin bond a broken promise. That's how I feel about Lazy. Oh, oh okay. I think nice. I think the idea of a larrikin bond mm-hmm. is wonderful. Mm-hmm. I think it yeah. works not just from a prideful Aussie perspective. I think it could really work from the for the character as yeah. a whole other interpretation. Yeah. There's a glimmer of that in Lazenby. You can see why they chose him. Mm. You can see where their confidence was placed, and it's a broken promise. I feel like had he stuck around, we'd be probably talking about him in much different terms um, if he'd been able to settle into the role a little bit more have it built around him a little bit more as the other actors subsequently could subsequently yeah. is that word mm. uh, the other thing I've done on my list this week as honourable mentions and dishonourable mentions oh. weren't much of a mention uh, at all <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've done one for each of my bonds oh okay oh, cool. right. okay. so yeah. uh, my honourable George mention Yep. Is uh, Bond in his office? I think that oh, is yeah. a u- unique Lazenbian Bondian thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the dishonourable mention, which I never want to see another iteration of, unless they can get it right, is when he's uh, pretending to be Hilary Bray. Oh yes, and he's dubbed for the entire and he's time. He's dubbed for yeah. the entire time. Mm, okay. Worst Bond moment for me. Oh okay. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, I'm going to be controversial <gasps> here, and I'm going to break from the pack. Oh. oh. Now, I've seen all of the Bond films quite recently again after watching them for the podcast. And I don't recommend it, actually. <laughs> I think sometimes you need a bit of space. But I will say this. All six of the actors, all, all the six actors who play Bond are really within an inch of themselves, except for probably number one. Number two, they're all pretty much right jostling for each other. But, and I'm sorry Bond fans, but my number six, fine actor. But for me, too tense and terse throughout his two films. Oh. It's Timothy Dalton. Yeah, wow. And the problem I have with him, and, and, and it, this came to me only this morning. Mm-hmm was that I went, <clears throat> he's the only one that I like more in his non-Bond things. Oh, wow, that's interesting. Every other one of the Bonds, I actually only like them in Bond, apart from Sean Connery, probably. Mm. But Dalton, I love Dalton in Hot Fuzz. Mm. And I really like him as Bond. But I feel like he doesn't have what I want from Bond. There's just a little... Energy, there's kind of a, a looseness about him that's not there. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and it was funny because going into watching them on the big screen, I thought I would like The Living Daylights more than I liked License to Kill. And I think I liked The Living Daylights more as a film, but License to Kill is more what Dalton's Bond should have been. Right. And had they done a third film and they'd kept following that path, Maybe Dalton would have gone up higher in my ranking. Mm. But where it is at the moment, I think the thing that puts him as my lowest is that I like him more outside of Bond than I like him as Bond. Fair. Wow. Wow, I'm not so expecting... I thought you were going to say Brozzy. No, then. I... Well... I'm a little heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I do apologise too to the fans on Twitter. You know, I... But look, I like them all. I like them all. But... That's, We're under the microscope today. Mummy has a favourite. Yeah. She does. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh dear. Number five, gents. Well, I'll tell you what. Oh, it's going to get shaken up here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to follow suit. It's Timothy Dalton. Oh. Oh. Um, uh, you guys are walking home. <laughs> <laughs> Could this tear us apart here at Trey Bond? <laughs> Controversial. Um, yeah, look, was he a victim of only two films? I mean, I feel the same about Lazenby in a sense, where you go, oh, what would have been if they had more? But going off what they were able to give us in the time they were given, Dalton doesn't give me what I want for my Bond. I don't really buy his physical abilities. <gasps> Um, He's doing more of the stunts than Roger did. did, did. I find his acting a little grimacing at times. It makes you grimace or he grimaces? A bit of both, maybe, to be honest. (laughs) I will say this. I really... I actually quite adore the relationship between Bond and the Bond girl in The Living Daylights. I thought that was one of the best parts of that film. It 100% is. And there are elements of that film that are quite beautiful and um, he really nails that stuff mm-hmm. yeah really yeah i think that that's stuff. probably his his strength yeah um and yeah. i i i really think license to kills a, a secret banger and it's probably at the top I, of my list to I, go back and rewatch. that film has gone up and up and up and up and up with each watch i've had this year mm. and and I, I know i'm jumping on your bit there oh, but you're right. it, I I'll really, get you later. in terms of highlights low lights like Dalton in License to Kill, there is something about him where I'm like, yes, 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 yes. And there was something about in The Living Daylights where it just felt like a film not completely written for him. Yeah. Mm. There's an oddity to it. Yeah. There's something obscure that happens with the with the Dalton films, I find, that are kind of caught between what I assume they were hoping to get from Dalton, this more sophisticated, serious Fleming actor, Bond. Fleming yeah. Bond. And then they go and whack in things like exploding toothpaste and laser cameras and or yeah. X-ray cameras and stuff like that that Ace belong action. in a, in a, yes, in a Roger film. So. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'd expect that from Roger. You know, whether or not he's to blame for that, I don't know. And, and to tar him with that brush might be a bit also too harsh. Also hair for me. The style, <laughs> the style for yeah. me is a problem. Yeah. He, there, there are too many times where I feel he feels uncomfortable. There's a, there's a lack How of confidence. How dare you feel what he feels? <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this, Dalton for me kind of stays relatively neutral, yeah. whereas Lazenby, I feel, actually takes some backward steps in his choices, yeah, if yeah. that makes any sense. So that's why breaks I put... Even. Dalton breaks break, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, Dalton's kind of, meh. The money he invested in playing the character... He came out even. Yeah. (laughs) No losses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whereas with Lazenby, I think there were losses. There's a deficit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's my number one, so... (laughs) (laughs) All right, well, my number number five. Yes. I'll do the the haiku first. Okay, okay, great, 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 great. (laughs) Imagine if he put Dalton. I know! (laughs) Coked up Bond. Product of the 90s. Oh, we know who that is. We know who that is. He knows exactly where to touch. (laughs) Yeah, look, he was very lucky not to be in my number six. Wow, really? Pierce, if you're hearing me, you were (laughs) this close. Oh, wow. Shots fired. (laughs) Yeah, he only saved... Is there huge gaps for you with the the bonds? There is. Yeah, right. There's a huge... uh, Six and five... Level pegging, right? Yeah. Big yeah. gap to four, right? Small gap to three, pretty big gap to two and one. <gasps> oh, okay. oh, wow! There's a clear okay. front runner for you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So tell us about Piercy Boy. What's your What's uh, your beef? I'm still trying to understand the man. So that's mm. maybe to his credit. Yeah. Why he's not number six? Um, I feel like. The Enigma of Pierce Brosnan. <clears throat> the Enigma of Pierce Brosnan brings out the Enigma of, of culture and context for me, more mm. so than any of the other Bonds, which I think is strange, considering there's some racist, racy stuff in Connery's era. Yeah. Mm. But it's it's the 90s that brings out my conflict, because I understand how we got him, yeah. and I understand liking him. I resonate with that era. So it, it 
it's conflicting because how did we get it so wrong so recently? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, I just don't like, I don't think he's present. I don't think he's present in the role very often. When he is, he's very good. I appreciate his honourable mention for me is his kind of busy work. I like when he's got something in his hands. Yeah. Something to do. He's entertaining to watch as an actor. Which is a kind of classic actor's trick, wouldn't you say? Yes. Yeah. To kind of distract the actor from acting. Play, play with the furniture. Yeah, that's exactly. right. But I, interestingly, that also turned into my dishonorable, dishonorable because oh. it shows his weakness yeah, right. in his cigar-chomping nature in Die Another Day. Yes. You're yes. not James Bond, mate. Who are you? You're distracted by your, the cigar in your, and you're watching yep. the other actor. Mm. And now it's coming out in your performance. That's, yeah, you're 100% right on that. We, Jake and I saw Die Another Day on the big screen a couple of days ago. Yeah. Darby couldn't make it. He's been... Very busy. <laughs> um, but uh, we saw it with a couple of people, and that scene really stood out for me when yeah. he's, he's with Halle Berry and um, with the Delectados, the, the sleeper agent in Cuba. Mm. Where I was just like, whenever you saw any of the other Bonds smoke, yeah. it looked like they knew what they were doing As, when and, they smoked. And it still and looked Brosnan, like they were James Bond. Yes, but Brosnan looks so uncomfortable with that cigar. He does. It's really, he really, really bad. Does. Mm. It's really bad. It's... Everything looks like a prop. Even the way he holds the um, the vodka martini in the ice palace, I was like, he's not going to drink that. Oh, yeah. I just think he's a, he's a. I don't feel like he's ever going to drink that. I respect his impact. I respect Goldeneye and his tenure. Yeah, but him personally, I I got a personal gripe with this. <laughs> yeah. So so you would, but you would put his Bond films on before. Lazenby. I would. There, there's a certain... Uh, if you were just going off the actor. If I was just yeah. going off the actor. But there's a, there, there is a certain slickness that I love that comes with Brosnan that yeah. we might not have gotten without him. So, you know, there's a trade-off there. But True. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Not you your go. cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. No. Well, number five. I mean, they're all my cup of tea. It just depends on the day and mm. the time of day. <laughs> so... My number five isn't a terrifically skilled actor, and he only had one, but for me he has Bondian DNA, and that might not equate to being the nicest of people outside in the real world. Daniel Craig. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, for me, number five is George Lazenby. And uh, I, I, I agree with everything the two of you have said about him. Um, the, the reason he sits... Jake said he's at, shit. At, no, Excuse yeah, me. You did, you did. <laughs> uh, and I can see where you're coming from. But there is something about Lazenby that when he walks into a room, when he is in those love scenes with the girls, the way that the girls look at him, and yeah, they're all acting, but also it was the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a machismo, he's got a kind of raw animal what's that called animal magnetism Mm. about him and the fact that he could swindle his way into the bond role says something about him that's a very bondian thing to do it's a hell of a story he's very capable in the fight scenes and when he's being physical uh i would say he might even be more capable than than connery looked and connery is very bloody capable and I would say the the scene at the very end mm. of Honor Majesty's Secret Service where he says, it's quite all right, she's just sleeping. Yeah, we Jake. have all the time in the world. What about that? That moment sweeps me off my feet. And when we saw it on the big screen, him in the barn with Tracy, after oh, also when he's fucking terrified in the ice rink. He's doing what? He's, oh, he's fucking <laughs> terrified. My God. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Um, that yeah, that, that scene's brilliant. Scene. And, and then when he's in the barn with Tracy after that, after they've escaped, there's a real tenderness and, and quite genuine openness and, and connection with her that I was just like, those moments save the more janky comedy moments that he doesn't really nail. Mm. But I would say mm. he nails more of the comedy for me than Dalton does. And comedy's not a huge thing for me. But being good with the one-liners and the quips, I think, is kind of an important thing for me when I'm from what I want from a Bond mm. on film. Yeah, that's 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 where it is. And also, 
I don't like George Lazenby in anything else but on Her Majesty's. I don't see George Lazenby and go, oh, in such and such. It's He's just James Bond. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything else he's been mm. in. Yeah, he was in like a... Neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> Neighbours. The Man from Hong Kong or something. Some tacky B movie. Anyway... We're up to number four now. Ooh, Ooh number four. Mr. Shakespeare. Very good. I can hear people listening to this podcast. You can going, hear people. You don't know what you're fucking talking about. You're <laughs> absolutely wrong. <laughs> oh, it's not number six. Oh, I'm turning this shit off. Yeah, that would be me if I was. <laughs> <laughs> number four, Mr. Shakespeare. Well, I don't know not how angry this is going to make people, but yeah. if I was listening, it would probably make me angry. It's, it's Pierce page. Brosnan. Oh, what? My God. Pierce Brosnan is my number four. Really? Yes, he is. You love Pierce Brosnan. I know. I know. At least when I began this journey, I thought I loved him a lot more. You're always saying, look at his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> look, I think Pierce is, and probably always will be, my James Bond. I think oh, there's something... It's just that the, that the term itself is, 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 is kind of reduced in esteem. Your James well, Bond doesn't really matter. It's well, like the no. fourth, fourth best type I've, of James Bond. I've... There's your James Bond and then there's three versions better. <laughs> and I'm happy to settle for number four. No, look, look, I have, I have increased my knowledge. I have blown away my ignorance... Uh, and acquired better taste over the course of this podcast. Um, and I have come to learn... All debatable. That I... <laughs> all debatable. I have come to learn that Pierce is my number four. <laughs> Look, I think The Golden Eye is one of the greatest Bond films ever made. Did you call it The Golden the Eye? The Golden Eye. I think, oh, I think The Golden Eye... <laughs> Is one of the greatest Bond films ever made. It's actually a good title. <laughs> Makes more sense because it actually is a thing. Yeah, the, the, golden the Golden Eye. Yeah, I looked it up on the Google. <laughs> <laughs> but after that great film, the standard slips. <sighs> and it slips pretty bad. Wait, are you coming around on Tomorrow Never Dies being not very No, good? I'm just saying it's that a there, a flop there's mode. a gradual descent into madness. Mm. Um, so the world is not enough is worse than Tomorrow Never Dies? With, n- no, no, it's, it's undulating. It's Peaks and trots, peaks and trots, peaks and trots. God, I should have prepared a statement. I should have wrote this down. But all on the madness graph. <laughs> but all on... And then there's a sheer cliff down into Die Another Day. Mm. Um... Yeah, look, I think you watch that performance evolve over time and you realise how, at least for me, I realise how insecure he is. Or it appears to be. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know the man. <laughs> thoughts and opinions. I don't know the man. He appears to be insecure. I think this is a debate we were having uh, while we were watching Die Another Day the other week or whenever it was, I can't remember. A couple of days ago? Uh, yeah, right, that was it. <laughs> um, that he is... For his time, and arguably still now, one of the most handsome men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we've heard it. We've and heard it. and yet, <laughs> and yet, he seems. But to... I mean, it, he's like really handsome. <laughs> and yet, he seems to be working so hard to be sexy. Yeah, yeah. It's like he doesn't carry with him that kind of. Confidence, that ease and confidence of a man who just is handsome, which, in, so uh, someone like me, we, uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Darby's got this quiet, brooding thing going on that mm. just the women flock to him, and mm. some of the men too. Woman, w- uh, ah, ah, right, right, right. Yes, he says, wom, wom, woman flocked, flocked to him. Yes. Um, whereas with Pierce, I don't know. It's all of the grunting and the over. The, he's doing so, so, so much. He is a stylish dude. His Bond films have a have a, a look to them that is nostalgic for me, and that carries some weight. I'll admit it. But that's one thing that I love about the Bonds is that Pierce is my Bond because he's who he was Bond when I arrived here. He's also he's very good looking, and he is very good looking. Um, you know, if you talk to 
people who were, you know, 20, 30 years older than me, then it was it was Roggy or it was Sean because he was Bond when, when, when they came about. There's something beautiful about the evolution of Bond and, and the fact that it does change, but... So he may, similarly, he makes you feel that culture and context element. Yeah, it's a touchstone yeah. of time and childhood yeah. and all this kind of lovely sort of fluffy stuff. But, you know, outside of that, his performance becomes ever problematic. Mm. But I love okay. Goldeneye. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I not... was really not expecting him to be that low for you. No. But... Mr. Mr. Darby Deck, who's your number four? Number four. So we're, on your scale, we're, we're, it's a significant jump in quality. Oh, yeah. yeah. From yes. here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, up to here from number five. Yeah. Uh, right, yes, yes, yes. Big step up. Okay. Gentleman Bond. A remarkable fellow. It's got to be for me... Mr. Daniel Craig. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Roger. Friend, oh, friend, friend of the podcast. Of the podcast. Oh, I, w- he makes me feel the warmest yeah. out of all the Bonds, and I think... It upsets me that he feels he isn't or wasn't as special as he actually is. Yeah. Mm. I think he, he took, uh, like, a, made as much a mark on the role as, as Sean in, an own, in his own and unique manner. I think he's a lovely Bond. I love spending time with him uh, regardless of the film, even when it's not a particularly good movie. Mm. I'm just happy to bask in the mm-hmm. Rodgy kind of glow. Unless, unless he's being known all Rodgy. <laughs> I can't really stand no at all. Don't have too much tolerance for no at all. Don't have too much tolerance for no at all. And I think my single most honourable moment is when he he. It was a toss up. Yeah. Uh, but I eventually went with when he turns the gun on the bullet maker. Yeah. I think man with the golden yeah, gun. Man with the yeah, golden yeah, gun. That's, that's awesome. a great moment. We, a you moment. and I saw that in the cinema yes, together as yeah. well, and I remember it. It Impact. had that energy. It was Ooh. like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Low point? Uh, a, that was I the know-it-all no, no no nature. Is there a particular... Oh, outing? look, it was too cliche to write, but it would be the monkey. <laughs> it would be when he's dressed as the ape. The gorilla suit. The gorilla suit. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, fair. Yeah. <laughs> fair. Summarises all that is wrong with Roger. <laughs> Well, say no, mate. Put put your foot yeah, down. Put your, put your foot, foot down. down. Don't You're get already dressing suit. as a clown. It's one or the other. <laughs> yeah, there shouldn't be two. Well, gentlemen, my number four. I'll be agreeing with one of you. Mm. Uh, my number four. I've written diminishing returns and too much reference to previous iterations. Goldeneye is exceptional. Though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Mr. Pierce Brosnan. Yes. I, look, I, I've got. We've all got the same thing. Nostalgia. We grew up with him when we were becoming aware of the world and what James Bond was. We were becoming aware of Pierce Brosnan as mm. Bond. So he is indelibly kind of stamped, or you know, whatever. Imagine mm. if he'd only done the one. What? What, what a yeah. legacy! Or imagine if he'd only done good ones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a my main gripe. Look, no, I'll start with the positives with Pierce. Mm. Um, when he is, when he's on fire, he's re- he's actually really quite untouchable in the role. There are moments in GoldenEye where I'm just like, holy shit, this is exactly where Bond needs to go. Yeah. Like, why aren't we still going down that, why didn't they continue down that path with Tomorrow Never Dies? Where you're watching this guy who is seemingly both timeless and current. Mm. There's there's something about him where you're just like he's a man of few words. He gets the job done. Comes in on the wind almost. Yeah, he's, yeah. and he's capable mm. and mysterious and handsome. And there is something about him that's like, hang on, he's not like the other Bonds. There's something about him and, and handsome and and handsome <laughs> and so handsome. <laughs> but then. We fall into, and I know that a big, I've said this on the podcast before, a big part of Brosnan's films not working is the fact that the the scripts are pretty lacklustre. Mm. He gets hamstrung with, I mean, in Die Another Day, the back hour, it's nearly only puns. It is. <laughs> like, it's nearly it only one-liners. Um, so there's a lot of that to it. 
But I also find Why that... did no one pick up? <laughs> I know, it's just... What do you mean I'm saying Another that? Another one? It doesn't make any sense. We just did... I know we're shooting out of order, but even still... <laughs> um, Give the people what they want. <laughs> but I would say his biggest weakness is not so much just that. It is also the fact that when we do get into the darker, deeper, more emotional territory in the other three films, the world is not enough less so, but in Die Another Day and Tomorrow Never Dies, it is so overfelt that when when Jake and I were at drama school, we got this note, and I actually brought this up with you the other day, mm. don't act for everyone else in the scene. Yeah. And a lot of the time I get the feeling that Brosnan is acting for everyone else in the scene. Yep. That he is showing just how painful a moment is. Just how deeply felt a thing is. Like, he gets close in Tomorrow Never Dies when he turns the gun on Kaufman and, you know, he goes, Oh, please, I'm just a professional doing a job. That's not Brosnan, that's Kaufman. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's very drunk. Isn't it? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and he shoots him. Like, oh, you're close. But just before that, when he's sitting there and he's drinking the vodka and he's got his shirt sleeves rolled up. Yeah. And the way, the way he pours the vodka ooze. and the way he kind of looks at her and everything's pensive and he throws the, the vodka glass down on the ground. You know, it's like you could have just placed it. The, yes. It, it gets so soap operatic yes. in those moments. Yeah. We noticed it in Die Another Day Die when he drops the, the, the machine yes, gun in he, the hovercraft. Yes. He does a mic drop. As if it's super hot. Yeah, and then turns around a few, <laughs> a few scenes later... With the, um, put your hands down. Yes. You know, in, in Those Hong moments Kong. are fantastic. Like, no, just put your hands down. And it's so underplayed. It's like, yeah. it is there. He does have it. But and, and you nailed it. It's, it's that thing of, you're so handsome. <laughs> you don't have to do you anything. You don't have to act it. No, you don't have to act sexy. Stop because grunting. you are a very, very attractive, charismatic person. Don't breathe heavy on And this. a great ambassador for the Bond oh, franchise. Oh, those nose exhales. Yes. It's also breathy. And then also just the moments of like, I know some people like it, but in GoldenEye when he opens up the door and he's in this kind of b-boy stance and he's like super wide frame, legs apart, everything's presented as yeah. he slides open a door. Just open the fucking door. Just stay normal. Same thing as when he gets out out of the water into Hong Kong at the Ruby Eon Hotel and he does this little hop skip into like a <laughs> planted triangle kind of you know sure footed base I'm not like, West Side just Story just fucking get out of the water that would be freezing fuck off <laughs> do up the pyjama shirt fuck off <laughs> yeah. it's, it's those moments where I go fucking hell he's not a real person in yeah. those moments yeah yeah that's and, right. and his films are too bogged down trying to be a lips. balance between Moore and Connery and in so doing they they don't end up being about Brosnan's interpretation. No. It's just constant looking back, nods, references, nods, references. Just and it just means thing. that Bond... I mean, that kind of stuff makes me go, oh, well, then it's a code name. Yes. Which it shouldn't be. I mm. should be just watching someone's interpretation of Bond. Because yeah. when he walks into Q's uh, Even though branch. I put him at four and I've been harsher on him than I have my five and six. <laughs> I know. I'm harsh because I love. That's right. You could have been brilliant. You could have been a contender. <laughs> <laughs> Because when Brozzy walks into Q Branch and die another day and picks up the shoe with the... And he touches the tip the of it. poisoned tip. It's like, yes, that was you. You did <laughs> you that. Don't there. pick it up. <laughs> Does this still work? Yes, that's your bloody jetpack. <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> All right. Before I have a conniption. No, we do love. We love. Yeah. I, I love. We anyway. hate because we love. <laughs> I know. It could, could have been amazing. Well, we're into the top three now. Yes. And this is the last one you can say without it being a dead giveaway of the Oh, yeah. Uh, so Maybe we should do our two in one in one go. I think we'd probably have to, yeah. Oh, dear. Number three. Yes. Shakespeare. Yes. I'd like to say nobody does it better. But there's two above him. I'd uh, like to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the great irony is that when I started this journey all of these episodes ago... Have you been drinking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, we've switched places. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. He's taken up the drink and I've quit. <laughs> when, when, when we started this journey, I adored Pierce Brosnan with a vengeance. And I thought, uh, I thought this this actor 
was a tired old clown. You That's did right. Say that. You, you did said say that. I was so clown. uncertain about what this was going to be. Uncultured. This, this relationship. Yeah. Swine. 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 <laughs> But I have since come to truly adore Roger Moore. Sir Roger Moore. Sir Roger Moore. <laughs> um, Give him his proper honour. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you said it, Dubs. I mean, Gentleman Bond, he, he is that. In My Bond coup. He is. <laughs> in your Bond coup. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know. I've got really nothing but praise for him because I... For me, if it's true what they say about Eon and that they are willing to do whatever their bond wants to do, that the bond leads the way, then Roggie was clearly the most passionate and wanted this, you know, and was so happy to be a part of this Mm. and was as was bold great. enough to do his own thing with it as many times as possible as many times <laughs> as possible that he truly is unique and as much as we say you know some of the other bonds might nod to him or anything like that it was truly original for him whether you like it or not yeah um and i think no one no one can pull off a, a quip like Roger can he, he can dish out those one-liners. Oh, you're remembering like, your like, war stories. Like nothing yeah, yeah. Else. I know. We're sitting around talking about... I remember about this time, Roger Moore, Moore, that son of a bitch, he went out to the bar, and just with an eyebrow raise, he, he shouted everyone in the goddamn bar. Six weeks later, I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there are things you're going to do and see and experience in a Roger Moore film that you will see and experience nowhere else and for that I love him he's number three alright number three well my number three you might not get him based on the haiku Ooh. Uh, oh it's 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 two people for me so I wonder yeah no nonsense bond brainy and brawny Dalton Dalton yeah it's Dalton <laughs> <laughs> he's not number one top boy Bond wow, but no. he's my James Bond yeah. mm-hmm. oh use, I know the feeling to use Jake's uh, <laughs> measurement device I think when I think of the character uh, as you know I'm reading him as words on a page mm. when, I, when I conjure the image of James Bond Dalton comes to mind um, the sort of debonair attitude that he possesses his seriousness, his grit, his grace under pressure. He really does capture the character for me, which is why I took to him so bloody quickly. Yeah, immediately. Immediately yeah, as well. Immediately. He was the one I remember you having the, the strongest and quickest reaction to yeah. after we saw the first of he's, the he's, Bond actors' films. Yeah, he stole my heart, and The Living Daylight stole my heart, and I watched it again, and I didn't like it as much. But, And I think you're right, License to Kill might be a better film. For him. For him. Yeah. But there is the, the whole, and it's my honourable mention, the whole scene at the carnival oh, yeah, does yeah. so much for, for, for James, for wheel, just James Bond in yeah. general. Yeah. Not even just Timothy as James Bond. The romance and the love that he feels is something that I think is missing from a lot of interpretations of the character. He's a passionate man. He does love. He can't mm. help but love in the books when you read them. Yes, yeah. You know, he's, I mean... Some may argue lust and interpret it thusly, yes, yeah. but uh, I think with Dalton you really see a sense of the gentleman who has a soft side but is forced to kill. And uh, his dishonourable mention would be Best Man Bond. Yeah, you didn't like that you at really all. You don't, I like, don't that. like Best I, Man Bond. See, I really, I really like all no, of that. I won't hear it. Wow, <laughs> that's it. so funny. That's you, burn it and burn it, burn it forever and a day. <laughs> Anthony Horowitz. Um, well, there you are, Dalton. 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 For, Dalton for Darby. I love him so much that I've named a character in a screenplay. <laughs> <Yes, laughs> right. um, well, my number three, uh, let it be. Mm. Oh, it's the Beatles. Oh, it is the Beatles. Um, they are. Kind I would of say, changed. arguably, the only person to make the role his own. Hey, hey. Truly, charm and humour, a true gentleman. 
It's friend of the podcast, oh. Sir Rodgy Moore. Oh, I Rodgy. tell you what, I get, I get, I well up when I talk about Rodgy. I, I, so I, well, I, I get emotional I'm with well Rodgy. Yep, I never, I've never met him, no. but I feel like he's just as close as my granddad. Oh. Yeah, yep. yeah. There's such a strong connection there. Yeah, yeah. I, I love everything that Roger did um, as an ambassador for Bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was watching an interview with him uh, only a couple of days ago. It's him, oh, it's him being interviewed by someone, uh, some American for uh, the 19, it's just like a day or two after the premiere of um, The Spy Who Loved Me. The interviewer is like, that was the best Bond film I've seen in years and blah, 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 blah. And really, I think you've saved the franchise. And Roger's sitting there, cigar in hand, and he's like, oh, uh, I don't know if I'd say anything like that. I, you know, it's all up to Cubby and you know the team, really. I and mean, they don't pay Ken Adam enough, and blah blah blah. And he's, he's constantly deferential, mm. and he's like, "So where where else can they go after this film? You know, where mm. where can they take it?" And he's like, "Oh, they've always got something up their sleeve. They're scouting in South America for something, and you know, there's always some, some way to make Bond bigger and better." And then he goes, "Oh well, so you're you're on board for the next one?" And Roger's like, "Well, you know, if they'll have me." <laughs> it's constant it's this constant thing of like he's, he's so never beautiful. never big noting himself and you watch him on screen and he's truly generous I mean I will say the films like Moonraker and that I start to see a bit of his weakness as an actor I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't be as harsh on him as he was of himself mm. but I think I said it in the podcast sometimes leading man is not just being about charismatic and handsome and, and nice to be around it's also kind of knowing when you're with a slightly not I'll just say weaker scene partner. Uh, you're not meant to talk about acting in those terms, but uh, <laughs> you know, don't make choices, don't make you know, don't make judgments. Um, but you know, it, sometimes I find he doesn't lead the scene. He can kind of he gets trapped in other people's energies sometimes yeah. in the films. Mm. But when Roger is on a roll and having a ball and just owning the role and doing his version of Bond, it's untouchable. Yeah. No one else is ever going to be able to do that again because no one else is... We're never going to have a man like Roger Moore again. That's right. They're you just are not never going to get him. Yeah. Mm. And, and, you know, even people, even people who were his contemporaries like Sean Connery and Michael Caine and Richard Burton and that, they might have had the class, they might have had the humour, but they didn't have the whole package. They didn't have that soft spot that now, whenever I hear the song, Nobody Does It Better, I feel like I've been to his funeral. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I, that feels like not only a celebration of Bond, but a celebration of Rodgy. Yeah. And oh, you're very eloquent. He'll always very be eloquent. a friend of the podcast. Yes, he will. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> remember when I used to cry on the podcast? Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> those days. It's because I was drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, Jake. How are you going to do this, mate? Let's guess. All right. Going All right. in. Yeah. So we'll guess, and then once we've locked in our answers, you can do your two and your one. Uninterrupted, you have the floor. All right. Well, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, if you say anything egregious, I'll snap you. <laughs> He's gone Lazenby 6, Dalton 5, Brosnan 4, Moore 3. So it's Craig and Connery. <clears throat> Craig and Connery, as it is for all of us. As it is for all of us. Okay. Open the floor. <laughs> Where do you think? Um, I think he's going to go Craig Connery. I think he's going to... Well, yes, yeah, see, he could, couldn't he? I think... It could go either way. He could either go acting nerd and say, Craig, nobody does it better. Yeah. Or he'll go... James Bond history nerd and say nobody does it better. Yeah, because I think the biggest thing, this is my preconceived notion of your, of, of for Connery in particular, mm. I think that one and two are almost interchangeable for you, mm. but I think you were the most surprised and most... You had more revelations with Connery. You went in thinking he was just a young, dumb thug. Something to that effect. <laughs> <laughs> Yum dung and full of something. <laughs> Whoa. I'll call the lawyers here. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas I think you with Craig were less... You were like, yeah, he's always good. He's a great actor. Yeah, true. I think true. there'll be something about Connery. Mm. I don't know. Particularly just because of Thunderball. All right, well, I'm going to go... Thunderball and Yolk. I'm going to go Connery Craig. Two, Connery one. 2? Yeah. Okay. And I'll go Craig Connery. Right, 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 right. 
Pooda Sellers. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, Daniel Craig doesn't figure, mate. He doesn't come close. No, number two. Uh, let's start with number two. Oh, let's rip the band-aid off. It's Daniel Craig. Yeah, <gasps> got it. Um, interesting point. Valid point, Brandon. I think it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Going into this, I had seen, uh, maybe not all of them, but glimpses of all of Craig's, Craig's films. films. He was the one I probably had the most uh, context for. Yeah. Um, whereas... Uh, Mr. Connery was a whole new kind of introduction and experience. With with Craig, I mean, uh, it's just where I said it when we first watched Casino Royale. I, I had, I was so struck by that film and his subsequent films. Yes, all of them. Um, <laughs> that they are in a class above themselves. Yeah. Thanks to Maybe mod- not modern above cinema. Themselves. I th- uh, the others, yeah. The others. A class of their own. A class yeah. of their own. A league of their own. Um, because of, you know, modern cinema and, you know, their incredible films. Yeah. Led by a hell of an actor. And he has given us something that, uh, you know, we talk about Roger and making it his own. I think Daniel's done a wonderful job at making it his own as well. And really illuminating aspects of Bond's, you know, psychology and emotional life that is there, um, certainly in the novels we've read and experienced as we've discovered them too, and we're now able to see that in, in flesh and blood. Not that we hadn't seen glimpses of it before, but I think no, Daniel's yeah, yeah. really given us yeah. that a, a really new, different aspect to Bond. Yeah, yeah, mm. um, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, one hell of a blunt instrument, and you know those stunts. Uh, you know, obviously he's got doubles and stuff like that. But the the shit they put in those films, I tell you what, it's it's thrilling. And I think way back in the beginning, uh, that's really what I wanted from a James Bond film. I wanted to walk away thrilled. Yeah. And even with Spectre, I Which never. You love. I I do. He doesn't though. Yeah, he oh, pretends. I do. I do. No, 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 I bloody do. No, I do. I do. I do. Don't just, just ignore that last bit when he's running through blown up MI6. <laughs> um, you know, I never walk away stirred. It's always shaken with Daniel. He's fabulous. Mm. Do I go into the yeah, yeah, yeah big boy? You do what yeah. you like. All right. <laughs> Well, folks, um, it's Trey Jake here again, uh, talking you through my number one choice this week. Feels uh, like we were here an hour ago. <laughs> it's Sir Sean. Oh, um, oh that right. makes so much more oh, sense. Oh, who would have thought? And you know what? I, I'll say it. It's not just Sir Sean. It's James Bond. I don't care. He is. <laughs> he is the man. Um. Which, yeah, you I populist. reckon if I, if I sat down with my uh, uh, younger self and said, hey, you're going to name Sean Connery as your number one Bond, I would have slapped my older self in the face and yeah. said, shut up. I don't you think don't... you would have said that 44 episodes ago. Yeah. Con- Connery would condone that behaviour. He would, yeah. he would. With an open palm, an open, not a closed <laughs> fist, an open it. palm. <laughs> um... Yeah, look, I mean, yes, I'm a, I'm a populist. But, you know, I've, I've got evidence for this. He did surprise me. Thunderball, you're right, B. Thunderball really blew my mind. Yeah. Um, yeah that, that, similar to how The Living Daylights for you, just as an outsider yeah, yeah, who yeah, had, yeah, had right. seen no, like all these, these Bond, these yeah. Bond films, mm. yeah. you, you were The Living Daylights yeah. and you, Thunderball. The Awakening. GoldenEye was such a thing of like, oh my God, that was great. But Thunderball... Uh, it was just euphoria for you. Yeah, it really. In was. the same way that I feel like I respond to Casino Royale, there's something about that where you go, everything in that is my perfect Bond film. Thank mm. you, Tick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Although you also had From Russia with Love, Doves. Yeah, yes. that was but, a big deal. But for yeah. it, I think The Living Daylights was more for the, the Bond, Bond actor. The other mm. one was for the film. Was for the film itself. Mm. Yeah. I think he really surprised me. Um, look, he is stylish as all get out. He can handle the charm and the comedy, the dryness of his performance, the physical, animal nature to this to this man. 
he's a movie star. And a thug. And a thug. But a good thug. But a good but thug. With class. Yeah. Oh. Um, like one with like a, a... You need a bit of thug. Grill. Grill. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and the knuckle like dust. Like bullion. Dust. What was his name? Yeah. In The World Is Not Enough? It is. Its yeah. name is Bullion. He is yeah, Bullion. Yeah, 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 you nailed it. Um, I should. <laughs> I've seen him enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I, I I can't really sing his praises high enough. I think he you can't hit will. That note. I can't hit that note. It's a Shirley Bassey, and she the outsings high B7 everyone. Eight. It's a high B seven eight K seven. That's um, right. With a bit of a D. It's it's Sean Connery for James Bond. Wow. Uh, well, well, Jake. Now we predict how Darby is going to rank the two C's, mm. the CCs. Mm. Uh, I think he's going to be the flip side of you. I think he's going to go Connery Craig. I think you're right. I think he showed his cards. Or she. (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) I think they showed their cards. Yeah. And uh, when he was saying that I was going to put Craig number one. I I would do no such thing. Put Craig number one. I'm with you, yeah. Tell us we're right, Darby. And well, how about I, I join I join the haikus? Yes. Yeah, yeah, Together yeah. Come make on, come one on. big haiku. All right, great. Bond, James Bond. Oh yeah. King amongst kings. Honest Bond, a stroke of modern genius. Oh. oh has he? Have you gone two and one or one and two? What there? did you read out first? Ah, Mister Bond. <laughs> I read number two first. You read number two oh, first. So you went Connery Craig. Yeah. 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 yeah, we were right. We were right. Ah, yes, Mr. Sean Connery. I mean, you said it all. Very, very articulate statements, Jake. I don't know if there's much left. Thank you. Um, unsaid. I'll find something. You, you will. <laughs> I'll pad the uh, I feel, I feel, I'm pretty echoed on on your sentiments, but flipped. Echoed, but flipped. Echoed, but flipped. A flipped echo. Hmm. Um. They're a bee's dick, really, aren't they? It's, they are. There's yeah. not much between them. I mean, they both. Um, do for their time similar things for mm. the character. Yeah. Uh, tread similar ground. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Connery, what more can you say? He does He does live as the character and, and brings breath to the character as well, which was hard to do as a movie star with such big fodder mm. in the mm. day, but he did it, and it was a real achievement. His honourable mention has to be the clay shooting from... Thunderball mm. uh, epitomizes his character and his kind of bravado. That's the sort of. Oh no, it isn't. If they feel like two sides of the same coin, Connery and Craig, but the outlook is different. Yeah, y- you know, yeah, it's like they're the same person, but they have a different temperament. Yes. Uh, yeah. Connery wants for fun. Craig's more morose, and uh, yes, uh, and kind of lives in that a little bit more, and, mm. and, and enjoys it. Yeah. Um, his dishonourable mention would be, uh, unfortunately, piloting the little Melly. Oh, oh yeah, yes, he didn't really like that, that either. He didn't really like that. Really that it's the opposite of James Bond. Which is why I Ugh. don't understand the, why the Bondola is in our novel. Because the Bondola's done? great. Oh, God. The Bondola's practical. It's stylish. You can wear a tux in it. And in fact, Roger does wear he a does. tux in it. He wears a suit of some you know. description. <laughs> oh, God. So... Oh. Vote one bundler. Um, and your number one. And my son. number one is of course Daniel Craig. Uh the man who Yeah, I don't I don't know what happened between two thousand and two and two thousand and six. Um in cinema. Thank God it happened though. Thank God it happened. In action cinema more specifically. Films with this level of depth had obviously existed outside of the James Bond universe prior to 2006. Yeah. Mm. But there was a changing of, of the tides and, and it happened as I was growing up and I saw it firsthand and he did, he revitalised James Bond. I saw it happen and uh, I was there. I was there, man. <laughs> I was there, man. There. And um, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> and, the, and, and it was just, it gives me hope that Lightning can strike again in mm-hmm. the offices of Eon yeah. because yes, it was yeah. a real melting pot of ideas that kind of led to this. That's why I call it a stroke of genius. You know, it was it wasn't one person, it wasn't just Craig. It was a general feeling, almost yeah. like a revolution that happened. Yeah, and he led it, and he's still kind of leading it. I, it, he almost slipped to do to two for me simply because in the past film, just Spectre. A classic. His character is less; it becomes less defined if you were yeah. to look at the whole. 
Um, whereas Connery is always one B. Yeah. So it just feels a little disingenuous that he should sort of appear as two types of James Bond. Yes. Um, but it is what it is, and I hold out hope for No Time to Die. Um, his honourable men- honourable mention, what he does for James Bond that no other actor does, and the way he announces it, you know, oh, with yeah. the torture, I think. Oh, I thought you were going to do his Bond, James Bond there. No, like, no, 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 no. Oh, I yeah. mean, that alone. But, but the actual torture. We hadn't seen anything like that in yeah. such a glitzy, glamorous film. We're in a James Bond film. We're just in a casino. We'd just been given what we were promised. Yeah. James Bond playing cards in a casino with mm. gorgeous girls, villains, mm. and then you're taken on this complete detour and end up in this really confronting scene. It was very confronting at the time. And Daniel Craig is just... Yeah. yeah. So Phenomenal. good. Yeah. So good in that scene. I mean... Ugh. There's there's at least forty shots in that scene, at least forty setups. They were there for days. Yeah, that performance was stretched over a long period of time, but it is so coherent. He is such a good storyteller, so confident in his choices, and for that to be in his first James Bond film, my god. Um, mm. Just honourable mention. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> is I almost gave it to the parachute landing, oh. Inspector, oh, which I on. really don't like. It's not. It's not Daniel Craig, um, but it's the polo shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a it's one reaction shot. Oh, <laughs> it's really? come down to one. It's shot. come down. To, he's so good that there's only one real thing about the Craig tenure that I'd change, apart from the editing in Quantum of Solace. Oh yeah. But it's it's one reaction shot when when M falls to her death and he kind of they they cut to oh, and yeah. he does that little. <gasps> I'll, I'll come and catch you. I'd just change that in the edit, would you? Because it's not doing my Craigie boy any favours. So. Uh, but yeah. There you are. Yeah, you really and that's it. Go. There yeah, you go. That's it. Well, uh, what are your predictions for my two and one? Uh, I'm going to stand by my preconceived notions. I'm not convinced Daniel Craig is his number one. I think Connery will be his Ooh. number one. Ooh, okay. As much as he bloody loves the man, as much as he loves the It depends on how poetic he was feeling. When did you do the list? Uh... Solidified it today. What had you just eaten? That's a good question. Uh, oh, I'd had uh, porridge with blueberries. Mm, mm. That's a very Connery that's meal. That's a Connery meal. Is it? Connery meal. That, Connery's like eggs and fucking bacon. He didn't give a shit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a coffee black? Yeah. Mm. I never have milk in my coffee. Uh, Connery. Yeah, Connery. Uh, Craig likes a latte. Oh, Craig doesn't like a latte. <laughs> the what frappuccino. Are you about? <laughs> latte, Craig. Uh, He's a black coffee drinker. I don't know. I'm on the fence now too. But no, I'm going to stick by my guns. I think Connery's his number one. Well, I'm going to do the opposite of you because you're stinky. Mm. So you think Craig's my number one? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, coming in at number two. Do you have a haiku? No, I've just got my little notes that I've written. Uh. The best acting performance. Casino Royale is Bond at his best, Holy and shit. Daniel Craig is my personal favourite. The thing that holds he's him your off, James Bond. He's my James Bond. <laughs> Funny phenomena we've had there. Look, the thi- look, look, the thing that holds him off the number one spot, and it's a technicality. I haven't seen No Time to Die. Oh, I haven't he's unfinished his tenure. <gasps> Unconfirmed and, list. And Ooh. if we got another Spectre. He's number two. Yeah, gotcha. Mm, we got gotcha. another Casino Royale. He's number one. Oh, that's such an MI6 expert in the field response. <laughs> what if he'd only done the four and there was no film? If coming? he'd only done the four, he's number two. Mm. Um, you said something, and no, I, I, I think I mentioned it next week in the video game perform in the oh. video game review. It is a performance. Our time machine. There are two Daniel Craig Bonds. <laughs> Mm. Yes, yes there this is, is a good discussion. Listen to the video game yes. episode. So I won't go <laughs> into it too video. much and watch it. That's another sneak peek. Um, <laughs> Daniel Craig in Casino Royale and Quantum. I'm smitten. I'm, I, can't, I don't know what to do with myself whoa, with, with whoa, that whoa, performance. Because it, it is just so... It's everything that I wanted from Bond and I didn't even know that I wanted yeah and he's giving new things and he's going yeah you like that don't you oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 please I'm gonna have some more <laughs> Skyfall I have nothing bad to say about it but it also isn't 
my everything. And and I and I don't there are moments which I said in the podcast review of Spectre, I don't think Spectre deserves all the flack it gets. Daniel Craig is never bad in these films. But I don't want to see that energy ever again from Bond. That felt like, not that Craig was tired with the role. I think people read too much from these, you know, interviews. And they put too much on, not Jake. <laughs> the, 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 the community as a whole. I find that this is pretty prevalent on Twitter, that people like to do all the detective stuff and go, oh, well, he was feeling this on Tuesday and they shot that scene. Well, if it was Tuesday. Uh, yeah, true, actually. He had blueberries and porridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I find that Bond himself is a little weary in Spectre, and that I'm not so interested in seeing. Mm. Um, but Daniel Craig has done something that I know that Bond has been saved a lot throughout its the franchise's history. Path the course. But Daniel Craig really, truly reinvented what Bond is. And what it can be. And what it can be, yeah. Mm. There, there is now so much potential for the future of the Bond franchise. And you're right, it's not just Craig. It's a whole team at Eon that are responsible for that. But Daniel Craig really has... He's just opened up. My mum hated the Bond films. <clears throat> and then she saw Casino Royale and she was like, damn it, that was actually a fucking good film. He's, out He's really good. Del Castro. <laughs> sure. <laughs> How do you figure? <laughs> He's well, our, inspired us. He's our communist He led the charge. Oh, right, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, maybe Che Guevara or... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm um, happy with my job. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, Craig, I, he, he is my Bond. He is my Bond, and I think he'll always be my Bond. But not today. Ooh. The original. And what about Cheese and Onion? Objectively the best. Objectively. Whenever I think of James Bond, I think of Sean Connery. Yeah. And I think of Sean Connery particularly in the Fab Four. Dr. No, From Russia With Love, Goldfinger, Thunderball. All four of those, he gives us somehow wildly different interpretations of the character and yet the same character. Mm. There is something about when you hear... It's impossible not to do a Bond voice that is... I mean, we do Rodgy a lot because <laughs> we fuck around. <laughs> but most people, they'll go, shaken, not stirred. Mm. My name is Bond, James Bond. Like, you do Sean Connery's voice. Can I you try? don't, yeah. No, I'm not <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> like, you, you don't hear Daniel Craig's voice. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't do an impersonation of Daniel Craig. No, and you, may, you might do a like, slight pout. Yeah, you might do the pout. Yeah. <laughs> no, Sean Connery, incredible. I, and I, again, don't believe this thing of, oh, well, he was tired. He didn't want to do the Bond films anymore. It's like, well, that's not evident on screen. Yeah. It's, you only live it, twice as great. You only live twice as great. And to be honest, he's pretty fucking good in Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah, yeah go, he's Diamonds. a little less uh, in shape. But he's, it's still James Bond. And it's funny, I've put him as number one and my dishonourable mention. Because the dishonourable mention, Never Say Never Again, that's not... Canon and it's not Bond. Mm. That Fatable. that's where spite is evident. That's where I'm tired is evident. That's mm. where all of this other stuff is evident. I mean, that's really quite probably where it comes phoned from. Phoned in and and not in no way do I think of Sean Connery. I I feel like he's putting on an act yeah. when he does that. It doesn't feel like anything is coming from him. Mm. But every time he, he dons the tuxedo in, in his original six, I'm like, yeah, that's that's James Bond. That's I've even he's the one that I've got on my coffee mug. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, so there you go. I got Mario on my coffee mug. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I might have shocked a couple of people with that list, but uh, there you go. There I you fucking go. stand by yeah, it. Well my preconceived notion was bloody right. Yes, it was. You were. Well, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone who's listening, I have tabulated, calculated, and fabulated the results. And this is the official party line. Excuse me? <laughs> this is... Uh, we may have in our private meetings here our own uh, personal uh, yes. thing. But when we meet the press, when we front the press... This is uh, what we say. This, this is what we say because mm. uh, the leader has decreed it. And the leader is... Uh, the three-headed monster the, the three of Trey Bond. Yes. The, yeah. the piece of paper. Yeah, the devil we all worship. The tally. Yes. yes. 
So coming in at sixth place, our least favourite Bond. George, George Leisenberg. Leisenberg. George Leisenberg. Mm. With four points. Oh. That didn't happen to the other fella. No. Oh. None of them. Oh. In fifth spot, it is the 90s Wizfid kid. Oh! No! Pierce Brosnan. Oh. Yes! On six points. Ah, my but, boy Dalton gets it. But he's so handsome. In fourth place, <laughs> it is Timothy Dalton. Yes! Well Tense and terse. Oh, we're happy with fourth, boys. With 007 points. Hey. Ah, oh, see? Number see? third. Podium. Third. Three. <laughs> number third. Num- number the third. <laughs> Roger Moore, friend of the podcast, friend. 11 points. Wow. And then with only a point between them, Daniel Craig at 13 and Ooh. Sir Sean Connery at number 14. And that's the list. We stand by it. Which is your list. No, Isn't I it? voted Craig first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The closest, the person who got closest and to third. that. Jake. Well, no, yeah, no, no, none, none of us. None of us, really. <laughs> none of us. <laughs> yeah, none of us. <laughs> <laughs> but all of us all of us because it's our yeah. official it's our official opinion. list that's right praise be well thank you for listening next week we will be doing our special video game review and mm. with a guest lecture that's right a little little, a little uh, TED talk yes a TED talk for you all to attend it is mandatory <laughs> and your attendance will be marked but it is our 2010 uh, no well it's not our uh, 2010 it's all of it's everyone's 2010s uh, Bloodstone, and that was a video game. And, uh, <laughs> we reviewed it. So.